D. P. 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 The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. <laughs> I like what Maddie did there. <laughs> You know what it says? Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. She did a Steve shot, a me shot, and then a you shot. But the sh- you shot is very you, Jesse. You're not even. You're just like you just kind of looking at your computer. Oh, it's the first yeah. time you ever watched the show, Adam. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was just about to say. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, did Adam know the Steve Dangle podcast exists? I Madeline do. does that quite often. Yeah, you wow. did, I think you did that last one was show. good though. That one was really yeah, good. You've done that. You've done that a few times. Yeah, yeah, a few times. Okay. Done it a yeah. few times. You, you were you were trying to what? Make it look good. You got to put down your mic. Yeah. There you go. Sorry. I keep forgetting that's there. Yeah. What do um, you need? I was just, just trying to make Adam look good. Oh. oh and right. make him look like he didn't forget anything. But then you guys <laughs> outed him and then that's changed. That's all right. Listen, am yeah. I paying a whole lot of attention to the camera angles in the first 10 seconds of the show? I'm not going to lie. I'm not. There's other things that I'm looking at. You ought to. Other things that I'm... I, yeah, there is things that I ought you to. You ought to be, yes. Should be looking at the dog pound. Oh. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Now, uh, I just want to say, I know we've been we've been promoting it, talking about it. Um, I did want to say that Richard Coffey reached out to me and said that uh, TMU, your alma mater, Stephen Jesse, I guess me too, I just didn't graduate, yeah. uh, beat the Calgary Dinos in yeah. double overtime, and they outshot them 51-46. The game was on CBC on YouTube last night, so they're broadcasting all the games, and like, there was quite a few people in there watching. I was shocked, and uh, it was a great game. Yeah, fantastic stuff from TMU. I think uh, I think they're they're heading on to what is it? The they, semis now, yeah. And then, uh, hopefully they reach the finals Man, on Sunday. When we were there, when Steve and I were there, that is, uh, that that program was terrible. That well, that hockey team hadn't won a game in like t- ten years. They had to use their uh, they had to use uh, um, University of Toronto's uh, rink, which is. Yeah. I don't even know. Beautiful. No, no, it's a good rink. Is it? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. But yeah, but it's not their school. And they should have had their own rink. And now they finally do. I guess uh, we just didn't imagine it would ever be Maple Leaf Garden. Like that, that was, I feel like that wasn't even really discussed when we were in our first and only year together. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, it's true. It wasn't. Uh, but I think, uh, I think, yeah, the, the football team and the hockey team were terrible. Now I think they're both pretty good. They've turned that whole program around, which is kind of cool. It is. I, I like. Cool. I like seeing that. And also, if you've ever been to the TMU or uh, yeah, the TMU Athletic Center, it's like beautiful. It's Mattamy Holmes Athletic Center. Is that what it is? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. No. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> they don't include the Holmes in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, Athletic no. Center. Yeah. yeah. No, Mattamy no. Holmes. <laughs> they assume TMU that you know. Holmes. They assume you know. If you're from Mattamy. Toronto and you don't know Mattamy Holmes, yeah. I mean, school for where you been? Can't read good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's Montgomery the, Burns Award of Excellence. Yeah. Arena. <laughs> Arena. Yeah. Yes. Um. Uh, also just, home to the PWHL Toronto, who are on a nine-game winning streak, I believe. You were there on Wednesday last week. Yeah. Right? No, are they first place? They passed Montreal. I haven't looked at this. Yeah, it was a slow uh, start, but they've done well. Here, turn around. Oh, yeah, hold on, Maddie. Sorry, they played uh, 16 games. Montreal's played 17, but it says on the standings chart that there's a three-way tie. I think it's Toronto, Montreal. Yeah, you can bring it up here. There you Minnesota? go. Minnesota? We don't have to guess. Oh. Oh, no. Oh. We have no screens. Hey. That. Hey. Yeah. Well, it looks great. Yeah, this Where is we going go? well. It looks great. Thrilled about it. Quite the, start. the camera is on me, and that's great. Adam, do you see that the camera's on me? It's important to note. <laughs> There you I go, think, Maddie. Pull it up. I just thought it was cool. Yeah, standing. So it's a uh, it's Tor- Toronto's at the top of the standings. 16 games played, 30 points. They are in a three-way tie for first place with Montreal and Minnesota. And by points percentage, uh, they are in first because they have one less game than those two teams. Also, look at this goals for versus goals against. Mm-hmm. Like everybody else except for Minnesota, close to even, except for you know, Boston and New York fart. But uh, uh- I'm sorry, I can't like Boston. We can't like Boston. That's fair. No, no. Uh, but 43 34, that's pretty good. Goals, goals, they, goals. They had a slow start, and it was largely because they hadn't played together. It did. It, it, that's the reason it looks like why Toronto started so slow. But like after a few games, they've clearly become one of the top teams in the league. And a large part of it is Natalie Spooner. I was like, going to she, say, she's been on an unreal uh, little goal streak here, and she's been leading the way through this winning streak. She has uh, over a quarter of Toronto's goals. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she's yeah. she's pitching. Uh, she's going for the Cy Young. What, what is it? 12, 12 goals, four assists. I think <laughs> Cy Young. Yeah, <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. They're talking about MVP in the league uh, last night on the TSM broadcast. I saw on pregame, and I think she's front runner right now for yeah. MVP. Sorry, MPP, you can't have it. 
she's probably second in voting, but I think Spooner's got to get it. Yeah. I also, I also like that we all understand now that goals are more important than assists. There was a time when people would be like, well, <laughs> got to get that assist count up. Got to get that assist count. No, screw it. Just score. Just, Just score. score goals. Just fucking clap. Let's go. <laughs> there was a good TikTok from the PWHL Toronto about their team nicknames. And Nat, uh, Spooner came up and she was like, oh, so what, what's your nickname? And she's like, some people call me Cutlery. <laughs> I <laughs> like that. I like, Why? Like, <laughs> Thank you. Instead of Spoon. Oh. Spoon. She's like, obviously Idiot. people call me Spoon wow. and Spooner and everything, but like some people call me Cutlery. <laughs> it took me way too long to figure out why. <laughs> like way too long. I was I'm like, that's like, good. <laughs> that's a good one. I should have instantly caught that. Um, hey, something that was awesome last night, uh, what probably is going to go down as one of the best NHL promotions we've ever seen, Penn's Yager bobblehead night. We get a... Um, I got worked. We Oh, I think we all got worked. The local uh, Pittsburgh stations got worked, too. You could see like their, their local affiliate uh, television stations reporting this. And this is the... Uh, uh, it was on NHL.com, so this is crazy. The Penguins announced today that their shipment carrying the Yager bobbleheads for tonight's game has been stolen en route to Pittsburgh. As a result, the bobbleheads will not be distri distributed at tonight's game, but will be distributed at a later date. And then they follow that up in the afternoon with uh, Yermer Yager and uh, a bobblehead and, you know, him basically in his truck and putting it in. or like I, I guess it's a Ford truck because it was sponsored by Ford, but ah. it was just... It was really, really well executed. And it was funny because you see some of the Penguins writers, and I don't blame them for this, go, man, this is just another nail in the coffin of a, just a terrible year, right? Oh, when when it was announced that uh, the bobbleheads were stolen? Yeah. Oh, that's what I said. I go, this is one of the most, if it um, when it rains, it pours things I've ever heard. It was really well done. They like They hit the ice and they can't do a thing right. Like just over the last couple of weeks, they, they cannot do a thing right. And now they have a bobblehead night and they get stolen. Who's ever heard of that? And they were showing up on eBay or something like that. And uh, turns out we all got worked. We did. I like. I liked it. I liked it a lot. I know Keith Olbermann did not like it. Uh, no way. <laughs> Keith Olbermann is really? really upset about it. <laughs> oh. Ooh. I'm like, man, can people have some fun? This is a this is the best promotion I think an NHL team has done in years. Like name a, other like next to gritty. And by the way, there was a bunch of I think the Flyers responded with like a gritty mm -hmm. um, meme or whatever. But next to gritty coming out and being the mascot for the Flyers, has there been a better promotion? They do a great job. The Penguins do. They do. They they do a really good job with that stuff. Um, it's good to see they haven't lost their touch. Mm -hmm. uh, under new management, not that they would, um, but things change. You know, it's nice that I think I think guy, likely for a guy like Kyle Dubas, as, as hard as this year has been, when you look at something like that, first off, Penguins' relationship with their community is a lot different than, say, what we would have in Toronto because Toronto is just a different city. It's a different animal. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a much, much bigger city here. The Penguins need to to do fun stuff. The Leafs don't. And it must be fun to work for an organization where... Um, you can do kind of off the wall stuff like that because the Toronto Maple Leafs are like, I don't know what it is, but they they they're so big that they almost they almost feel like they can't or they, they inter like they could why not but internally they feel like no we couldn't do that that's not the Toronto Maple Leaf way why not just do things for the fun of it like see why I not? don't think that they do they think that way they right? ought to I think so too I mean the the next gen game is a really good local thing that they do to make sure kids get in the building at least once a year. Uh, but that's because they have to do that you, to you know, grow the game. You know what? Um, like, I, I don't know if this could be studied or whatever, but uh, the Leafs could take a lot of lessons from the the growth of the Toronto Raptors. And I'm not just same company. About, I'm not just talking about winning. Like that team was pretty bad for a long time. Uh, but the word would always get out because you know people would go to Leaf games, they'd win or they lose, but they'd be a Leaf game every time. Uh, and every couple seasons, someone who was a huge hockey fan, didn't really give a damn about basketball, would go to a Raptors game. And they'd be like, man, that was fun. There's always something going on. The Raptors going crazy and he's dumping popcorn on people. There's like a five second whistle. Doesn't matter. We can't have any dead space. Here come the dancers and everything. There's always something going on. There's a halftime show of some sort. And did the Raptors are the YouTube version of du jump cuts, by the way. Well, yeah. No dead air. No dead air. But did they have to do all those things? No. Well, 
They oh, yes. Did. Sorry, yes. They did. Yes. You know, uh, because they needed to... They had the Herculean task of penetrating a market completely dominated by the Leafs. And they did it. They did, And the Jays were back-to-back -back World Series champions, like, what, two years prior to the Raptors joining the city? Like, they had a big hill to climb, and it took them a while to do it, but, like, you could argue they're... Well... Maybe not the way they're playing now, but well, they're, I think the longest right tenured rapper have, has been there for a few months right now. So yeah. like, it's not it's not a Raptors so team. I, right I think you guys have the story wrong, the bobblehead story. Why they were actually stolen? See, that is what, and, but and yeah, Keith Olbermann just went with the because they released the video of the bit of afterwards, but they filmed that afterwards to make fun of them being actually stolen. But they were stolen. They the, were actually and stolen. And the people what? got the vouchers. Yeah, Jesse Marshall quote tweeted uh, Keith Olbermann. He's like, the Yager bobbleheads were stolen. Unfortunately, Keith Olbermann put out his story as reality to social media. Hilarious. Um, he's going to get uh, free. I don't know what that word is. Fricasseed. Fricasseed. What does that mean? Uh, I don't know. Um, no man has ever been up their own ass more. Well, well so anyway, also, so I wouldn't be able to see so that. That means Steve and I he were still got has to be blocked. Yeah, I don't, yeah, we were got in the different way. I think you guys were got by social media being like, "Oh, it's fake. They just did this for promotion." No, they actually got stolen, and the police are involved in California trying to retrieve the bobbleheads. But uh, wait, hilarious! Can, can yeah. you go back to that? To the did, Jesse Marshall tweet? Yeah. No, no. He got, uh, Keith Holmerman said people should be fired. Oh I, yeah, I you're I, a piece of shit. Hey, 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 hey! I think I think what it is. I think he's being. It's almost like when you wrote "Please care" and Mike Johnson took that seriously. Oh, I I didn't say please fire the Leafs. I hope they lose their job. <laughs> yeah. So Keith Olbermann quote tweeted the Penguins Yager going to go find the bobbleheads thing, and he said, "Looks like the Yager bobbleheads were stolen." Story is a bit. Unfortunately, the Penguins put out the story as reality to the news media. They are going to get free X seed. Fricka seed. Fr yeah. Make sure to tag. That's the word he keeps using. You wiener. People should be. He said people should be fired for this. That's what. And then I think it's actually true that they got. Okay. Well, what they did with Yager because he had the one bobblehead right, yeah. of this of the 18,000 that were yeah. stolen I think is brilliant yeah that um, was funny that so we were got we were just got in the wrong way Steve and that's okay well you know I what, I was like, what I'm what embarrassed that I believed a story yeah. so I think people should be fired yeah yeah so Keith Olbermann was advocating for people to get fired because they made a joke about their things being stolen yeah, and I think he was being obtuse with that yes as uh, he I don't does. think he actually means that people should be fired I want to throw this out there Jesse I just sent you a a, a text sure the Yager bobbleheads have uh, appeared online um, you can now buy them they're a hundred dollars American with twenty five dollars shipping uh, so if you want to buy them in Canada it's approximately hundred and thirty four dollars and seventy one cents. Okay, so you could buy the is Yager that a bobblehead. fake posting though? Well, like I imagine there might be repercussions for just uh, like what? What are you gonna say? You found them at the side of the road? <laughs> They're stolen. <laughs> what do you do with them? What's the plan? That's, You've got over ten thousand of these. What are you gonna do? That's what I was wondering. Uh, I was like, okay, so you stole twenty thousand bobbleheads because that's approximately what they got because mm -hmm. PPG Paints Arena holds eighteen plus thousand. Yeah. So. How do you then make a profit off of that? Because you can't individually sell them all on eBay over time. No, That's gotta, too many bobbleheads. They'll just be like, whose listing is this for 20,000 bobbleheads? You got to go to Rhodes or St. Denis and sell them at the fence. What's, uh, so so what's, the, what's the plan for the criminal here? I, I know. I, I wondered actually, because I don't know much about stealing stuff. Mm -hmm. Did they know what they were stealing? So that's where you go to, okay, if there's no plan for that, that means they stole it by accident. So they wanted they, something else. They wanted the shipping container and the whatever's in there, they're gonna yes. they're gonna grab that stuff and they're gonna steal it. And they take that when it lands in California, they take it, and then they're like, Oh fuck, we stole twenty thousand bobbleheads. We can't do anything with this. They wanted like furniture and all the other stuff that comes from overseas. Yeah, that's that's what they easy wanted. to sell. They they exactly Oh, it's so, a shipment from Alibaba. Great, they, I can sell this no problem. Hundred percent. Yeah. They wanted that, but they accidentally stole twenty thousand bobbleheads, and now they're fucked. People were referencing <laughs> the episode of the Sopranos where they steal a ship of Pokemon cards <laughs> and that's like, hilarious Pokemon cards are not unique though you could you could mm -hmm. hypothetically get Pokemon cards anywhere that sells them you cannot get these yeah. unique items anywhere else but from the Pittsburgh you Penguins. were you were crossing your fingers and be like I hope this shipment container is a shipment of PS5s 
You know, because yes. if, if that's yes. that's we're just, we're taking one and yeah. we hope it's a whole bunch of Xboxes, PS5s, iPhones, you know, something like that, and then we just go sell them over time. But they got fucked, <laughs> which is hilarious. Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> that I is think, actually listen. <laughs> so it's an unintentionally really uh, unintentional promotion that turned into an intentional one with the Yager video, yeah. which is still spectacularly executed. So shout shout out the Pittsburgh Penguins. I just I don't know. I thought following it a little bit. I guess I didn't follow it close enough because I th- I got. I got duped twice. Yeah, I got, yeah. um, well, this is even more admirable then, because they're making lemons out of le- or fuck I lemons out of <laughs> lemons I have a out new board. Like they're making lemonade out of lemons. If they made lemons out of lemonade, <laughs> what an amazing wow! Scientifically <laughs> that incredible. Would be you know what? It'd be less delicious but more impressive. Yeah. Do you want, a, do you want another timbit? Get some more sugar in your yeah, brain, please. Oh my god. Fire up. How much did you sleep last night, by the way? Uh, last night uh, was not bad. Yeah. Um, because she because I, I was sleeping okay. Right, she she is she's sleeping okay. The system that we have, um, because like if I'm waking up during the night while working, I'm gonna die. So I stay up a little later, um, give her the late bottle, go to sleep for not enough time, but still more than my wife, and then wake up early with Leo. That's how that works. It's difficult on uh, nights where there's a Leaf game, and then the next day there's a podcast. Oh, I can't imagine. Playoffs are going to be fun for you. Oh, you bet. Because those streams are coming back, sir. So. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you bet. Do we have a little, <laughs> have a little announcement? There? No, no, no. No, but well, I mean, I think, how would we not do them? Um, by um, the host being dead. No, well, we're running you out, sir. All right. We're, <laughs> we're, sque- we're squeezing every last bit out of you. Um, no, I think we can't, we can't do the playoffs without a Steve Dangle suit thing and uh, by the way anybody that, totally right, man. anybody who doesn't like AMS, asmr is steve eating a timbit directly into the microphone um yeah so i want to talk about oh one last thing mm-hmm. uh the penguins won the game too mm-hmm. yo that's crazy that's I, as a Leaf fan nice. what's that like I know. um uh six three over san jose um san jose already has 50 oh sorry almost 50 losses 40 42 losses and then seven overtime losses Oh my god! Uh, so forty nine losses. That's that's quite and poor. If you're a Penguins fan, you were probably sweating a little bit because after the first period, San Jose was actually up two one. Oh my god! And it wasn't until the third period that the Pens actually took the lead. Damn! Was yeah. this in San Jose? No, it was in. Pittsburgh. No, it was in Pittsburgh because it was the Yager Bob at night. Right. I'm yeah. an idiot. Wow. You, Again, you really didn't sleep. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> uh, the, and, and we, my, and we uh, can confirm that fans received the vouchers for the ball heads that they'll pick. Oh, up. That's, oh good. that's good. Yeah. That's good. My um, my wife asked me for a bagel yesterday, and uh, I took out the air fryer and plugged it in, and realized I had taken out the air fryer and <laughs> plugged it in. You could have made um, you, you could have made like bagel pizzas or something. You don't want to do that. <laughs> you want the toaster. I really, I'm really tired. <laughs> yeah, have kids. Highly recommend. Have kids. It's great. Hey guys, it's Tim Horton's 60th anniversary today. Whoa! How about that? So we've got back on me. Roll up the rim to win. Woo! Till March 31st. Now, uh, as we've told you before, to celebrate, you can win some big prizes. There's a ten thousand dollar. Daily Jackpot, sponsored by Tim Hortons Financial. There's also all-electric Volkswagen ID4, a sun-soaked Hilton vacation. Uh, and let me ask you guys this, okay? If you were going to take... Steve, let's ask you. If you're going to take me and Jesse on vacation, okay? I don't know if I want to answer this. You made fun of my last answer. Right. <laughs> yeah, San Diego? You're going gonna, <laughs> to gonna take us to San Diego again? <laughs> You made fun of my last answer. I don't know if I want it. You know what? We're going to go to Daytona. I can't wait. <laughs> uh, okay. If so we're, we're going we're going there, okay? Jamaica. We're going to San Diego. Okay, no, we're going to, Are we going to San Diego? Yeah, yeah. so what's what's the What are we what's doing follow-up? in San Diego, Steve? Okay. We're going to stay at the Hilton, which is uh, there's a Hilton giveaway. So, yeah, let's, say, let's gonna... say you won you won the prize to the Hilton stay to San Diego, but then you also won the Volkswagen. Mm-hmm. So you get your car in San Diego and you get to drive us somewhere in San Diego. I would drive us to go see the Gulls. We would see a San Diego <laughs> Gulls game That'd be fun. and be friends the whole time. That's a good one. I like that. Adam, what are you laughing at? My friendship? <laughs> Adam's We'd not a fan. We'd go see a Gulls game. <laughs> You don't want to see we, the San Diego we're gonna, goal. We're gonna go. We're gonna. We're gonna win this amazing prize. We're going to San Diego and we're gonna go see a hockey game that's not an NHL game. I love it. Yeah, it's perfect. That's very us. Glad you're, we be, you're being yeah. really mean, 
Steve's just trying to have fun with his friends. I know. Laughing it's at me. It. I'll take I, someone else. Adam. Adam. Listen, oh. you, can, you can earn rolls with your Tim's faves, including hot or iced coffee, breakfast sandwiches, loaded bowls, and more. And make sure you play on the Tim's app. It's available for download on the App Store or Google Play. It's the 60th anniversary edition of Roll Up the Rim to Win. From now till March 31st, time to get rolling. Rules apply. Canada only. No purchase necessary for contest or entry. And visit the Tim's app for details. Um, Leafs versus Philly. Uh, so that's the other game in Pennsylvania last night. Uh, we finally got to see what Matthews and Bertuzzi on the first line could and should have worked looked like from the beginning. Well, sort of. Sort of. <laughs> I mean, no Marner. No Marner and then no Yarncrook. Yeah, but I'm not talking about either. All right, players. all right. I'm talking about Matthews and Bertuzzi. And they looked good. Ew. <laughs> ew, that first goal. Holy shit, ew. That was so nasty. Um, the little hook pass from Bertuzzi to Nylander. Nylander just eating the Flyers alive. Um, could have used Torts on the bench for that one. Mm -hmm. And then uh, <laughs> Willie sets up Timothy Lilligren for a wide open shot, except Matthews is like, hey. I'll take that. <laughs> Check the number on the back. I'm taking that <laughs> shot. And then like, Lilligren up. was at a position. Like the, that pass wasn't going to him. No, I feel like it was because Lilligren didn't get it. If it was his pass, he would have fully gotten the pass. I feel no, like it was going to Matthews. He corrals that puck. He has a wide open shot. That's yeah, what but I thought. he wasn't. He couldn't. He he went to go grab it, and then Matthews is there, and I I think it was going to Matthews. It was a funny enough pass. Well, both guys had to like sort of stretch for it. Yeah, so it was it was a little odd. Um, I don't know. Ended in a goal. Matthews takes the shot and just perfectly off of Bertuzzi. Is it is it wrong that my first thought when watching that was like, oh, Lilligren almost screwed that up? No, <laughs> how dare you, man? No, because if no, he does, he scored a goal. Yeah, but he tried to pick it off, and I was like, leave it for Matthews, and it got to Matthews. Like, thank goodness. No, no, <laughs> no. Okay. No. I don't know. No. I like I like Lilligren more than you, so. You've been, you've been trying to trade him for two months now. He had a great game. Yeah. He did have a great game, actually. Yeah, and I haven't been trying to trade him. So, I've been very happy with him. You know so, what? You know what? Since you brought it up, right. the Edmondson-Lilligren pair got caved against uh, Montreal. They did. Uh, but uh, yesterday, um, their expected goals um, at 5-on-5 five five were is 85%. Yeah, that Montreal game, I said it the night it happened. You can't give it. Yeah. Just it's, wipe it. Wipe it. Um, dude, they were completely exhausted, tired, injured. New player. Yeah. Come back from a four four day rest. Let's see how you do. They dominated. Yep. There you go. And uh and, and against a pretty good team too. Listen, like, you know, everybody counted the Flyers out to start this year. They are still in somewhat of a battle for that third place, but you know, it looks like if everything, all things go to plan, they're gonna go to the playoffs. Uh Matthews, They better watch out. Yeah, they they are they are Somebody is hounding them. Yeah, because um, if the Islanders go on a run and um, like Detroit could even stick stick in there and pick up the wild card, like if they fall out of that third Metro spot, they're going to be in trouble. Yes. Because the Islanders are, are going hard. You know, uh, Buffalo's kind of still in it. Washington still, still in it. Buffalo is still in it. And the reason Buffalo is still in it is because Detroit's lost seven straight. Exactly. This so is insane. Yeah, at 76 points, they could fall in into that uh, wild card position if the Islanders uh, win a couple more games here and Detroit can put it back together because they've been struggling mightily. So the, the Flyers need to watch out. Respectfully to the Islanders, the Caps, and the Sabres, you should not be in a playoff race right now. And it's cool that you are. Like, really, truly. It's amazing. You had to win your games. Detroit has had, and we'll talk about them in a second, they've get, got one point in the last two weeks. Yeah, I don't know if I should save this for the... Oh, yeah, the Detroit it's just set, crazy. Like, I can't believe what's going on there. The Arizona Coyotes, I believe, since, like, late January, have four wins. Two of them are against the Red Wings. What? Yeah. And who are fighting for their lives, and they're wow. dropping games. Two games to the Arizona Coyotes. At one the point, Pavel the Pavel Datsuk Bowl. At one point, the the uh, Coyotes were also in a playoff spot. At wow. one point. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wow. I mean, here. Can, can we're I going back to the Leafs, but. No, I know. Uh, so for that game, can I give someone their due who is probably not getting their due? Is, is it the Detroit game? No, no. The Leafs, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Leafs Flyers game. I want to give uh, flowers to Sammy Erson. Uh, the goalie for the Flyers, who had a, he had a horrible game. Uh, he was, terrible. but he's been good this year. Uh, I'm gonna say he's been extremely admirable in an extremely difficult job. Uh, the Flyers had a starting goalie 
Uh, he is not in the league. Right he's a criminal. Now. He's well, p- uh, potential potentially, criminal. Potentially he's being charged criminally. Yes, there he's been go. charged criminally. Figured out the words. Yeah. There you go. They got another one from L.A. Uh, they got another one from L.A. Who I don't really think they had very much intention of playing. And then there's Felix Sandstrom, who was. I mean, he played 20 games last year, mm-hmm. so he was probably the guy a lot of people figured would be the backup. And then. Here comes this 24-year-old kid. He turned 24 at the beginning of the season in uh, Sammy Urson. And he he did play some NHL games last year. Again, wasn't the greatest. This year, he has 19 wins, 14 losses, and five overtime uh, losses. He's an 8-9-8, which is only a little below league average. But th- what was the stat on the broadcast last night? Did you catch it? He's, which one? He started something like 20 of their last 23 games. It's absurd. It's absurd. Like, he hasn't been that great, but he's their only shot at winning, essentially. Uh, Basically, every night they hit the ice. And, uh, you know, I think you, uh, as a minor leaguer, want any opportunity to make the NHL and to be, you know, a starter. Mm -hmm. You never envision it looking quite like this. And I think he's made the best of of a tricky situation for himself. And he's got the Flyers in a unlikely playoff spot. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Bad game. It happens. But I, I want to throw this at you. Um, uh, Austin Matthews scored his 40th even strength goal of the year. He has had two seasons where he has scored 40 even strength goals. Who was the last player to do it? Do you remember that? Two seasons uh, of 40 even strength goals? Non-Leafs? No, last player ever to do it. Even strength. 40 even strength goals in a season. Probably not Ovi. And that doesn't have to be in a row. I'm just talking about the last two guys, or the last the, the last single person to do it. Oh, man. Uh, Pavel Bure. Pavel Bure. Whoa! Hey, way to go, Whoa! Steve. Pavel oh, Bure. Yeah. Pull that one out and it of my was, ass. It was, go. It, I'm pretty sure it was Vancouver Canucks Pavel Bure. Wow. So we're talking early 90s. That hasn't happened since the early 90s. Four even strength so goals twice from a, a player. Did you see the clip that was going around of Pavel Bure uh, elbowing Shane Gerla? No. The the anniversary of him. He laid... It's one of the dirtiest hits I've ever seen. The penalty was no suspension, and it was the maximum fine of $500. Oh, wow. <laughs> Man. How things have changed. Holy they, shit. They, they always like to throw the book at those guys. <laughs> he would have easily got like 15 games. I think right. I think right. we need to... I, I would like to bring it back to Matthews for a second. No, mm-hmm. eat shit. Here's, um, here's your Urson stat, by the way. Uh, last 24 games that the Flyers fire, played. Adam, I just want to go back <laughs> no, to I know, I know, I know. forward to it. So we get too far from <laughs> I know, it. I know. Last 24 games, he's played 20 of them. That's unbelievable. That's, yeah. It's been crazy. And in that span, he's only an 884. How many games had he played in the NHL pre this year? 12, I believe. Uh, I had it up. Good question. 12. Like, that's nuts. Yeah, 12. He played 12 last so year. So he's almost wow. doubled his total games in the last month. He like played his total career games. Yeah, that January 15th is like 24. So the, about uh, three months, two months. There you go. I assume injuries must be involved because his first... Wait a sec. So his first season in North America, he only played five games. It was with the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. And then uh, last year... He played 12 games with the Flyers, 42 with Lehigh Valley. And he was all right. And this year, he's played exclusively with the Flyers. Right. But there's a guy who is forced into a position that he shouldn't be in. And he's trying his best, I think was the point you were trying to make. He's, he's <laughs> just doing his best, man. He's swimming upstream, and he's just he's just chugging along. He's ideal, trying his best. Ideal world, <laughs> he would probably barely be playing games and he's playing all of them yeah it's crazy i was actually concerned as soon as uh, they put sandstrom in the net and the leafs didn't score the entire <laughs> second period i was like incoming felix sandstrom like remember was it oscar soderblom no who was the guy that had that crazy game lucas dostal no for chicago who's the goal soderblom yeah oh, soderblom, so- soderblom. who had Arbit. like soderblom. the best game Arbit. of his entire career against the leafs earlier this year and he was terrible yeah, i think he has still two wins on the season and both of them are from the Leafs. he's like, like two and 19 <laughs> it's stupid <laughs> So, <laughs> so until Austin finally scored in the third period, and that was a that was a crazy goal. 
Uh, that was one of those goals that, like, you know, oh. he's coming, a, he's coming across, and Holmberg and him have had some magical moments together. That was a great feed. Great feed. Great feed. Arvid um, Soderblom on the year is four eighteen and one. <laughs> Two wins come from the Leafs. <laughs> Eight, eight or, like, I thought that's what we were going to get with Felix Sandstrom. And like in the second period, you have to admit, after that Owen Tippett goal went in, you're like, eh, I'm sweating a little he bit. He did have that one really good save. He's played three games with the Flyers this year, 8-4-6 mm -hmm. save percentage. Yeah. So, so Sorry, your Matthew stuff. Yeah, my Matthew stuff. So so here's... here's you know what I want to talk about <laughs> is... Uh, Arvid Soderblom. What? Okay. So listen, goals count the same whether they're on a power play or they're even strength, right? No. Yeah. No, they, I, well, no, no they different. don't. They, yeah. <laughs> they count the same on the score sheet. But we can admit, <laughs> we can admit that even strength goals are harder to come by. Yes. Is that fair? Yes. So I, I need to ask you this. Two seasons of 40 even strength goals. Are we about at the point that we're ready to have the discussion that Austin Matthews is? I know we're, I know we already have him as top three, but tell me how he's not the best leaf of all time already. With the ex maybe it's the playoff success. Mm -hmm. It's it is that, but I mean they haven't won a cup since 67. there were six teams. So I don't know. I think can, can we grade on a curve? A few more playoff rounds would help. But like, how do we? How do you make the argument realistically um, that Austin Matthews isn't the greatest player to play for the Leafs? Like if you if you just go okay post sixty seven. Sure. That way we take all the cups out of it, right? Mm -hmm. Even appearances in the final single tier. Um, <laughs> I still think there's an argument Doug Gilmore has the best season, like the best single season of all time. This season might beat Doug Gilmore's though. Well, so Gilmore had, it was the Selkie mm -hmm. and the single season scoring record for the Leafs, which is 127 points. Matthew's got a rocket and a heart. He got a rocket and a heart. Like how do we... I know. It's... The and like Sundin was extremely consistent, but he wasn't in this consistent top five conversation. Like nope. season in, season out, he's in the MVP conversation. I don't think Sundin was ever really in the MVP conversation, right? Fairly or unfairly, I don't remember. That can be looked many press reports about Sundin. Like he probably had a few fourth or fifth place votes, but I don't think. I don't think you were ever like Matt. It's going to be Matt's. Matt's is a top. Three. The highest heart vote. Uh, oh Jesse, that he's ever, damn Jesse, that he's ever received is in oh uh, one oh two. He was eighth place in the Hearts Trophy voting, and then two other times he received heart votes in his career in ninety six, ninety seven, and oh oh two oh three. He was eighteenth in heart yep. voting. Oh, and then one more in oh three oh four. He was twelfth. But his final season with the Leafs, he won the Messier. So. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. No, I think one of the things I always heard growing up about the Leafs is that no point in their franchise's history could you argue that they had the best player in the NHL and they've been the original team and you can't ever say that. And, and if you make the exception, maybe Ted Kennedy, one of the years, but like Teeter. never in the, in the history of their franchise did the best player in the National Hockey League play for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I think right now, Connor McDavid kind of ruins that. But yeah. at his peak of, hey, he was the Hart Trophy winner this season, you could make the argument that individually in one year, they had the best player that year. One and of, that would be his Hart Trophy season, which is kind of cool to say. One of the most underratedly pathetic things I've seen in Toronto sports is there was a season at the beginning of the season where Chris Bosh was absolutely going off. And in Toronto, we <laughs> and only us were having the MVP conversation. And there was a game where he did something cool. I don't remember what it was. And the crowd started chanting MVP, MVP. And the, and the camera goes to one of the players on the other team. I don't remember who it was. And you see his face go, MVP. <laughs> 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 and I was just like, oh, <laughs> damn, yeah. he's right. <laughs> Chris Bosch did not win MVP, by the way. No, no. No. Uh, I, th I think if Austin Matthews retired tomorrow, we pr could probably make a great argument he was the greatest leaf of all time. Probably the I think you I think without question the most talented. Yes. Yes. Without question. That's the probably most a better way to phrase it. And you can say 
okay, Dave Keon was this, but he was, you know, he, he may not have had that high-end talent that Matthews or, or some of the players in that era had. Like, if you have, like, if you're putting Dave Keon up against a guy like Guy Lafleur, it's not a competition. Guy Lafleur's the better player. Mm -hmm. But Dave Keon was a heart and soul guy. Mm -hmm. um, different, different players. Different, different types of players. Austin is the first real high-end player the Leafs have, have truly had. Like, it, like, and not to take away from Rick Vibe and his success in the 80s, but you look at Rick Vibe's career, those 50 goal seasons that he had, graded on a curve would be what, 35 goals? Well, depending it, upon the era? It would uh, cuz the you know, the 80s Gretzky was scoring like 80 a year. It's like scoring 35 or 40 now. It's extremely good. Extremely good. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to win like in today's NHL, you're not going to win the heart uh, uh you're not going to win the rocket with that. No. You're not going to be the league's leading goal scorer like every We've entered this era where every year several guys are going to hit 50 goals. Which is what it should be, by the way. Yeah. That's what it should be. Remember when it was like impossible? Well, for Jamie Ben won the scoring trophy with like 80, 89 80, points or something. 87? 87? I think. That's outrageous. Yeah. It was less than 90. That's outrageous. Yeah. How many that players that have that now? Oh, like my God. Yeah. I think. <laughs> um, by like the way, two leaves flirting with it. Um, the, the, the catch up that, that, uh, McDavid has done on Kucherov. He's like a point behind him now. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's right there. It's nuts. I think a, a lot of people go back to just your Dave key on point. I think a lot of people, if you make the list of you're doing a blog and you rank the greatest Leafs of all time, Dave Keon sits at number one, just cause the four Stanley cups, the con Smythe he had in one of the years. And I just, the legacy that Keon brings from the, the old timey Leafs era. So I think like to Pass Keon, Matthews needs the team success as well. And he needs a cup in the modern era. Yeah. We, we need he needs a cup in yeah, the modern the, era. Yeah. That's the, the team success. Once. Yeah. Sorry. Team success. Yeah. yeah sorry. That's what I'm that. that. Yeah, yeah. Do you mean, okay. Now, let me ask you guys this. Yeah, yeah. Because there are 32 teams, and we are likely, like, no matter how many tweets you send me, they are going to 36. So you can, you can argue with me all you want, but you're, you're fighting the wrong guy. <laughs> Batman's bringing them to 36. So can you make the argument? that a conference final appearance or several of them for any player is equivalent to in a league that was half the size Stanley Cup appearance a quarter of the size 16, quarter of the size yeah. You know? yeah yeah but even in the like in the 70s yeah you're right in 12 teams in the 70s they expanded this yeah is, for sure this is why they got to win they got to win so you put it all to bed because there was still that <sighs> At the end of Alexander Ovechkin's career, I didn't want to have to argue about it. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to have to be like, uh, you know, well, he did this and this and this and this and go through like 20, uh, 25 different accolades. And they go, yeah, but he never won a cup. He's got a cup. He got the one. That's it. You can't ever call him not a Stanley Cup champion. He is. You could say he won fewer than Crosby, whatever, whatever. He's got his cup and he's going to get the records to go with it. I need the Leafs to win a cup for me. I would like that. Selfishly, but, it needs to be. But for his legacy in the broader NHL conversation, it... Uh, look, so look at we the need discussion him to win a cup. we were just having about uh, if you take the teams and you grade them there, it needs to be undeniable for someone to be great. We can't yeah. be grading on a curve and bending the history to, oh, they had this many teams. That. No, it just needs to be, you say the name, you you know what they did, and yes, they are a great player. McDavid, too. Yeah, McDavid, McDavid too. Yeah. Like, listen, you can love or hate the Oilers. It, it's better for the sport uh, to have McDavid win at least one. Get one, yeah. At least one. Look at the way Marcel Dion is remembered. What a tragedy that he never Not? won the cup. Not remember. <laughs> and one of the greatest players ever. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. First off, he played on the West Coast when uh, the the Kings were owned by a guy, a Canadian guy, actually, who also owned the Lakers, who didn't who did not invest in the same way, I think. But I also want to I just I, I want to throw this out there. I feel like we're robbed of the history that Marcel Dion and that line uh, created. Uh, a because of the West Coast and B because they never won. And the Kings were never very good. He was like he was like Nathan McKinnon good in Here, his era. Here's what I'm I'm I want to figure out right now. I want to know how far down the top goals or top scorers of all time you have to go before you find someone who didn't win a cup. I think it's Marcel. It's Marcel, Dion. It Marcel, is, Marcel Dion it has the most points of all time without but, winning a Stanley Cup. But then beyond him, like, okay, next on the list. So Gretzky, yes. Yager, yes. Messier, yes. How, yes. Francis, yes. Dion, no. Eisenman, yes. Lemieux, yes. Sackick, yes. Esposito, yes. Bork. Almost, but yes. Crosby, yes. Thornton is the next up at number 13. No. There you go. 
Oh, I know. It's and it's killer. Like and Thornton should have won a cup with the Sharks, man. That team should have won. A hundred percent. And and here we are. The, Thornton's Hall of Fame discussion shouldn't be a discussion. It should be is he first ballot or not? And it should I don't even know if it should be that, Steve. Thirteenth all time in scoring. I yeah, agree I with you. I don't think anybody's saying Joe Thornton isn't in the Hall of Fame. Oh, you haven't talked to enough crotchety people. Okay. You haven't talked well, to enough we can, Jesse smartly tries to stay away from crotchety Well, I know. People. But, <laughs> but to the the discussion we were just having, yeah. multiple conference final appearances, uh one Stanley Cup final appearance that everyone thought they should have won. Remember mm -hmm. we talked mm -hmm. about that? Yes. ESPN. The Sharks got a sweep before the season or before the series began. Who was on the other side of that? Pittsburgh Penguins, Sidney Crosby. The greatest player, one of the greatest players of all time. Uh the greatest yeah. player of his generation. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he pulled it out. Who actually just recently passed Joe Thornton uh, <laughs> this season. Crosby, you son of a Mutant. Gun. Son of a gun. Unbelievable. And like Ovechkin got a cup. Recky got a cup. Coffee got several cups. Did Stan Makita? I think so. Tamer Solani got his cup. Uh, Brian Trottier. Yeah. You can't put Matthews in even close to any of those conversations. Not like yet. he's so far from it. Yeah. But even if he puts up the counting stats, it's hard to argue for him if you say he never made it past Florida. You know? oh, like, that's <laughs> that's a know. hard conversation to have. If, it's like, oh, he, they they went to the second round once and didn't beat Florida. Well, if if Roberto Luongo had never gone to Vancouver, mm -hmm. like just immaculate season, immaculate season, immaculate season. And then at the end of his career, it's like, okay, he's barely over 500 mm -hmm. <laughs> and did not win a single playoff series and, in fact, made the playoffs once. Like, speaking of Florida, like, they were awful. Awful his whole tenure. Yep. And uh, both if, times. If, honest, <laughs> both honest times. to God, both honest times. to God, the Panthers win the cup this year, Barkov should give it to Lou. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they need they need to get him a ring. Yes, like hey, thank you for keeping floor, hockey in South Florida. Yeah, yeah, you're the reason this team's still here. Here you go. Yeah, like yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I th I think the reason I brought it up is because that is, you know, to be up. You see Matthews at least in the regular season, and I know uh, I know we're Leaf fans, and I know that people in the comments are gonna be like, oh, you guys gotta stop talking about the Leafs. Well, we're Leaf fans, guys. Like I don't know, I, I, and we got a really no, great player. It's no, the show's been going on for eleven years. You're late. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're late. late. This, well, this is anymore. what we've always done. It's also it's a Leafs podcast. Well, not did you see the totally. album art? <laughs> not totally. <laughs> it's not totally, but like, did you see the album art? You can't ever accuse us of lying to you. Uh, yeah, at least we're honest with. Like, them, come right? on, the Leafs guys. Name is on the show. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what are you no. yelling guys, about? What do you mean? What's he yelling about? <laughs> we're wearing referee jerseys on the uh, on the album art, aren't we? Oh, we're completely right. neutral oh, guys. Hey. Yeah. By the way, does anybody want an all neutral show? That sounds really fucking boring. I think liars do. Yeah, that think... sounds extremely boring. Anyway, the the um uh the thing I want to say, the reason I brought that up is because you know, you see Matthews in conversation with um, you know, he's got six hat tricks this year. <laughs> the last guy to do seven was McGillney in 92 with, like, uh, the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, the, the record for that is Wayne Gretzky with 10, and he did it twice. <laughs> you know, you talk about, like, you're getting... I'm not saying Matthews is going to get 10 hat-tricks or whatever. I don't really know what he's going to get. He almost got another one last night. Like, you're talk, when you talk about the names that he is associated with, the clip he is on, the fact that in the previous decade, he scored the most, most goals, and he didn't get into it until halfway through. It's kind of crazy what this guy is doing, and I'm, I just feel like, you know, as much as we're Leaf fans and we live and die with every win and loss and we're hard on the players and then we're really easy on the players and it's, oh, it's a tough market. Everybody, everybody feel bad. I really want to say that I, I, it is such a pleasure watching this guy play, and it is so special because it was so long between Matt Sundin and Austin Matthews. There was nothing between no. those guys, 05, 06 Kessel. to, to that's, 16, 17. That's and it. Kessel's not on that level. No, he's not. And I loved Kessel, but he's not on that level. Well, Leaf Kessel was not on that level. You could argue he hit that with the pens. Because he had Crosby, Crosby and Malkin and around Malkin. him. Yeah, you're right. K Kessel, respectfully, was a winger and was never going to drive play the same way and, and also never had the talent around him. I feel bad for Kessel, but he could... Burke had him as... I think Burke saw him as what Patrick Kane became. Who is the best center Kessel ever had, Kadri or Bozak? Do you see well, how depressing that question was? Yeah, like that was, and it's not, and it's not Kadri 
Colorado Avalanche. Not Kadri. even prime Kadri. We're talking Kadri 14, 15, still developing Kadri. Like Dallas Eakins yelling at you for being out of shape, Kadri. Like, <laughs> what? That was the thing. I know. That was the thing. He got better. Yeah. Like, like people laugh at the Leafs now. You want to see laughable Toronto Maple Leafs? There's plenty to laugh at like mm-hmm. a decade ago. Phil Castle got robbed of a Conn Smythe trophy. He did. What he are we all going to admit that? He should have won it. We, he at should, the time. He should. Yeah, at the time, I guess. But yeah. like, I will forever um, be upset at history for Phil Castle not having that Conn Smythe. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, getting back to Matthews, which I think we've said seven times, um, <laughs> he I, like I didn't even think he had that great of a game, but there's such a mental benefit of the doubt that mm-hmm. he gets is Holmberg hits him with that pass, and you don't immediately know that it's Matthews, but your brain really quickly processes the blur that you're seeing as. Is that a three and a four? He's is that a three and a four? He's a lefty. He's kind of shaped like Matthews. This is going in. And that goal, the second goal he scored that we talked about, I don't think a lot of players score that goal. The goal the goal he sees him the whole way. Remember where Pontus Holberg catches him? He's flying in. That's the goal I'm talking about. Yeah, me too. Like like oh, okay. what I'm saying is like I don't think a lot of I think most players that they bounce that off the chest of the goalie. Do you think he had two goals? Yeah, he, did Matthews, he have two? Matthew, no. you said he almost got a hat trick. Oh, I thought okay. The other stuff, I thought he had two for some. He only reason. had one I'm last blurry. night. Was, I'm blurry today. Okay. Adam's a new dad. That's yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm a new dad and a girl dad. A girl. <laughs> Maybe you're thinking of the Bertuzzi one. Yeah, Bertuzzi oh, the, swatted it. In. I think that's that probably what it is. Matthews was not. Matthew shot it, and Bertuzzi batted yeah. it without looking at the net. It was friggin' awesome. Ah. Yeah. The, but I, yeah, one goal last night. One of the things that the that the Panthers were amazing at in the playoffs last year, and that we needed the Leafs to be a little bit better about uh, was opportunism. And I don't know if there's a stat for it, but the <laughs> Panthers would be like, hey, we got 18 shots and somehow we managed four goals. And you guys got 35 and you only we only allowed one. You yeah. know, they, they the Panthers were able to take advantage of both Boston and then Toronto and then especially Carolina, able to take advantage of any mistake that you made and scored. If you made a mistake, they scored. If you look at the Leafs' first period, they had like eight shots and they had three goals. Yeah. And and the the Leafs of previous years, and I know this as a Leaf fan, again, I don't know if there's a stat for opportunism, but there'd be like, okay, we got 14 chances in the first period and buried none of them. Right. And it mm-hmm. and it's sort of one of those things where it's like, no, you gotta you gotta create the opportunity. That's awesome. But you also need to freaking bury it, man. I think and they're of, doing that. Holmberg uh, he set up Matthews for what would be considered a scoring chance for most players. Yeah. For Austin Matthews, it's a goal. Right. He set him up for a goal. Like the moment the puck hit his stick, I went, oh, good. Two nothing. Right. Right. <laughs> and then, and it went in. Now, Sammy Statline, if you look at it and you're not a fan of the Leafs, if you just look at his season on the whole, uh, an 889 save percentage stinks. A 303 goals against average stinks. But since he went on waivers. Yeah, it has to be divided. Since he went on waivers, he's been one of the league's best goalies, and I, be- I believe his winning percentage is second highest in the league by goalies who have played more than 21 games, second to Thatcher Demko. It's March 15th. He is only... Ilya Samsonov, even dating back to when he was ass, has only failed to get a point in five games. That's amazing, actually. Five. He has six overtime losses, five regulation losses. He's been spectacular, and he's given them a chance to win every single game. Eat, you know, give up a stinker here or there. Sure, rebound you don't love here or there. Every game he's in net, they have a chance to win. It's one of the most miraculous things I've ever bloody seen. A goalie who you couldn't put in the net. The Leafs wouldn't even put him in an American Hockey League net. <laughs> they yeah, for ca- 10 days. And they call him up and they said, you good? And he goes, we'll see. And he just, he has not missed a step from last season. He was called up on January 10th, uh, 2023. Since then, 13 and 3, 9, 12. Pretty darn good. 9, 12 is well above league average. He got an assist last night. Dude, he's great. Got one point. One point, he's second in the NHL in wins since getting called up with 
Uka Pekka Lukanen. Yeah, because the Sabres have been on fire. The UPL had like a rough start to start the year, and this second half for him has been absolutely fantastic. 929? Yeah, yeah. He's been driving a lot of the Buffalo comeback to a playoff That's spot. That's amazing. Yeah. What on it's, earth? It, you're a big it fan, proves, like if they just got friggin' goaltending at the beginning of the year, Buffalo could be an, easily in a playoff spot right now. Four shutouts? Mm-hmm. Holy shit! Anyway, this is about Sammy. He's yeah. been great. <laughs> also, yes. Stuart Skinner, shout out 9, 16, 13, and 4 uh, since January 10th as well. Two of the most miraculous comebacks. Stuart Skinner, by the way, the other night, uh, with uh, he allowed the first two shots he faced, and then with two minutes left in the first period, makes the first save of the game, and it's one of the best saves of this NHL season. Yep. Um, question for you guys. Getting back to Matthews. Um, oh, sorry. The Leafs are going to have to pick a starter for the playoffs. If it happened today, because we think Joe Wall is going in against Carolina tomorrow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, who who do you pick? Samsonov, absolutely no question. Absolutely no Ooh. question. Uh, Joseph Wall has played th- three games mm-hmm. since returning from injury. Sammy uh, has essentially not lost in 2024. Uh, I love Joseph Wall. I think he's eventually going to be the starter. Um, that could end up happening by the end of the season. It did. By the way, it did happen in the playoffs too. Like he, because Sammy got injured, right? Yes. So it did happen last and, year. Like there's a month left in this season. Um, I'd be perfectly comfortable with Wool being the starter. It's clearly Samsonov. Like it, it's not even a conversation. Jesse, you agree? Yeah, no. The three games thing you outlined is like the other guy hasn't even been playing. You know? No. So how and two you... of those games they made him play were against Boston. Yeah, and Ooh. 881 in those three games. Not great. Yeah. Not great. How, how you can't sit there and say one guy has been virtually unbeaten, the other hasn't played because he's been injured, and go with the guy who hasn't played. So it's an easy decision right now for Sheldon Keefe, but this next month has to play out. We'll see if they split the time and Joseph Wall emerges back to who he was last year but right now no it's not easy it's not it's a very easy decision if you're saying joseph wall you have two things that you need to do today uh start watching the leafs again and buy a calendar <laughs> Are you, would you revoke their driver's license because that's one thing yeah. you love doing is saying that person has a license yeah they were all <laughs> i was man on the way here it was just a bunch of people who don't like Ilya Samsonov in my way <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, so I, I want to go back quickly because because I mentioned Lilligren Edmondson. The other pairing that we're seeing is McCabe Brody. And I want to know if you guys had any thoughts on that. And then I, and then I want to talk about Boosh Riley. But let's let's keep it to, to McCabe Brody, because here's the thing. Simon Benoit has now sat out two games mm-hmm. where he hasn't deserved to. He's been very, very good. Mm-hmm. But are McCabe Brody good enough together? Because it feels like McCabe's discovering some sort of offensive flair. Yeah. Oh, dude, all season. The way he plays is like a 60-point defenseman. Do you think he thinks he's Kale McCarr? A hundred percent. Like, on <laughs> a lot McCabe. of games, you're like, who do you think you are? Yeah. And then you look, and it's like, oh, he's got like 22 points or, or something like that. Um, I don't think Keefe would ever do this, but... Who was great last game? What pairing had 85% of shots? That would be Lilligren Edmondson. All right, so you don't break that up. No. Nope. Especially uh, if Lilligren's... If you're worried about the shot sides, right? Mm-hmm. You're worried about right versus left. You got to have those two together, and you got to get Lilligren in the lineup. So you got Riley with Russian Super Dave, mm-hmm. who... What we'll talk about. Holy cow. I don't know how he played the rest of the game. I don't know. So assuming Russian Super Dave is healthy for... Uh, it's Yulia Labushkin, for those of you who don't get the joke. Uh, for... Uh, assuming he plays tomorrow, to me, the obvious guy you take out is Brody. I put McCabe with Which, his... Which, I don't think that's going to ever happen. Well, I don't think it is, but like McCabe's regular partner for the last like m- several months is Benoit. Mm-hmm. So you have Riley Labushkin, Benoit, uh, McCabe. McCabe looks great on the right. I have no problem there. And uh, Edmondson Lilligren. That's a that's a big decor. I mean, the only other guy who makes any sense to take out is Edmondson, but like you're trying to get him accustomed to the lineup, and you just traded for him, so you clearly want. Him. No, he's he's got to be a guy that's in every game from now on, uh, unless he's injured or most of them, at very least most of them. Because well, you need him. I mean, if they're playing Boston, I'm assuming they are. You need him ready and integrated and feeling comfortable for the playoffs. He's got to play as much as possible. Yeah, so that's why you got him. I mean, and I and I think Boosh Riley is working out well enough, but I, so, okay, TJ Brody, you say, okay, Keith would never pull him out. Why? Uh, he trusts him. 
he trusts this player a lot. But they're starting to do too much to accommodate this guy. Like, he was playing on the right of Riley, and he was drowning. Okay, so you put him on the right of a different pair, and he's drowning. Okay, so you put him on the left, and he's still not doing that great. Like, I love the guy. Um, someone sent me the meanest tweet, the meanest damn tweet. They're like, who would you rather have, Zach Hyman or TJ Brody? Because they have about the same cap hit. <laughs> ah! Okay. Ah! That's a little bit of, I'm sorry. The Zach, I agree. The Zach Hyman thing is is such revisionist history. It's ridiculous. Everyone was like 5.4. Mm -hmm. Good luck with that. Yeah. Including everybody, Oilers fans, everybody by the way. said it was an overpay at the time because yeah. his career high in goals was like 21. Also, Zach Hyman is playing with Connor McDavid. Do you think if Zach Hyman was on the Coyotes, no disrespect to the Coyotes, but no disrespect, disrespect in, in this conversation, disrespect. because if Zach Hyman was on the Coyotes, he wouldn't have... 70 goals this year like it's not it's he knows not where to the be. same yeah he, he, he knows plays how to his play role with with mcdavid and the oilers it's good he's incredible yeah he's incredible i'm taking nothing away from him anyway sorry <laughs> distraction there um you know i i think people are putting too much into brad for living having like an all neanderthal defense like go look at what calgary's had for the last half decade that's not what they are Mm -hmm. Like we're talking about drafting guys like Oliver Shillington and, you know, acquiring Mackenzie Weger and, and, you know, stuff like that. That's, that's not all they're about. He just likes you to play with a little bit of snot. Yeah. Brody's a bit of a dick, but like he's small. He gets taken advantage of in a lot of physical battles, even though, you know, he's kind of a pit bull. Um, he's been on the wrong end of too many, uh, there have been there have been puck battles, net bonehead run. plays this year, unfortunately. Yeah, he's man. been good. The first this has been a really good contract run with the Leafs. A hundred percent. The first three years were spectacular. I have 100%. to say, like you never talked about him. He was never the problem. No, you did talk about him. You said what a great signing, and what would they do without him? True. Um, and I've long advocated for him to sit some games just as a reset. I don't think there's anything wrong with Benoit playing like the next three games in place of Brody. But Labushkin uh, might do everyone a favor and uh, sit a couple games out. Crazy. Because how is this guy still walking? Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. He I just, just got mangled. I just feel like if you're Keefe, you got to start to. And Keefe is a guy that really trusts his guys. And you saw that last year and, and, and the year before. And it's annoyingly so. Uh, but I, I hope that he has evolved enough as a coach to go. Three games isn't going to kill TJ Brody. I'd like to see Benoit back in the lineup. Him and McCabe have been spectacular this year. And and if you if you look at the numbers that Riley Bush have, Riley Bush have done, and you're hoping that Lilligren and Edmondson, the Philadelphia version of them, is for real, mm -hmm. even if it's not going to be 85% expected goals every night, if it's going to be in a positive, that's a that's a big mean kind of annoying team to play against all of a sudden. Like, there's that is not a soft blue line. No, I think we've seen enough of Riley playing with stay-at-home guys that we know that's what he should be playing with. You know what I mean? Him and Boucher are looking great. Him and Boucher, and then last year, him and Shen, and all that was in between was Brody. And, ew, it wasn't very good. Uh, maybe Lilligren's found that in Edmonton. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's not the end of the world that Benoit, who blocks shots with his mouth... Um, you know, sits a couple games to let those wounds heal a bit. Like maybe this leaves decor plays a style where it's okay to sit a few games to lick your wounds. Um, that being said, I, I'm not sure anyone on this roster needs it more than TJ Brody right now. My next question to you with Will Lagason gone, mm -hmm. who is the Leafs eighth defenseman? Who's their Martin Marincin this year? Mark Giordano. Okay. Or Connor Timmons. I don't mind Mark Giordano in that role. No, that's okay. I, I don't mind that at all. I mean, he's got to get into a couple games before the season ends, right? He does, but the... He's still injured as far as I know. But, yeah. yeah, if he comes in in a pinch in the playoffs... That's okay. Totally good. He'll come in fresh. Yes. In last year, he came in uh, basically dead. Yeah. And it, it was not uh, it, helpful for anyone. Frizz Bob on, on Twitter tweeted this last night, and I had to check it, and Frizz Bob was right. Uh, the Leafs have the third least, they're t tied, third least amount of power plays total in the league this year. Who's shocked? Well, I don't What's think... What's their power plays uh, uh, against? Power plays against. Because oh, I out. assume it's going to be within 
their range, so they're playing games evenly. Yeah, it's not a so it doesn't really matter. It's not a league. Guys, it's it's, it's a joke. Um, it's yeah, but it like did, like did you see a muscle move in my face? It's been like that for what seven years yeah part of the problem Go. part of the problem okay you can we can argue the ref thing and 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 we've argued it yeah uh we've litigated that i think part of the problem is the leafs have not been a great four checking team i'm talking about i'm not talking about scoring goals they can score plenty i'm talking about four checking in the way that tyler bertuzzi when he's on mm -hmm. does and he's and he's been on lately when when max domi is at his very best that kind of four checking that cali yarn croak the the guys that that create penalties are the guys that steal pucks in the neutral zone. The guys that break in with quick speed, like Max Domi does and force defensemen to hook them. Bobby McMahon is really starting to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Okay. Bobby uh, McMahon starting to figure that out. And uh, to a degree, Pontus Holmberg, it's just not there every game. The highest amount of penalties for in the league are the Colorado avalanche. <laughs> and that's not surprising because of how fast they are. Yeah, but they've been the anti-Leafs uh, for like again half a decade. They're high penalty. They're a high penalty team. They draw a lot and they take a lot. And the Leafs don't draw a lot and the Leafs don't take a lot. Yeah. Right. Because I've, refs go into every game going, oh, it's the Avs. I'm going to call an Avs game. Yeah. Oh, it's the Leafs. I'm going to call a Leafs game. Mm -hmm. I think it, it has to start with the referee conversation when we're talking about power plays because every ref is going to uh, ref a game so that each team gets the balance and whatever their preconceived notions of how these teams play and how many penalties they take is how they're going into it. So I have a problem like disassociating the refs from the play style of each team. We, the refs are just making their own judgment. And I think you're right. I think you're <laughs> right because there's a different spotlight when you're playing different teams. I, I do think that that plays into it. And um, if you don't believe me, look at the numbers. Mm -hmm. You don't have to believe me. You can just look at the numbers. The numbers state that this is there's something to this. Now, I got a message from Emmett on Twitter. And he said, hey, uh, and I think Emmett's a Canes fan. He said, hey, getting ready for the Canes-Leafs game tomorrow. I wanted to point out something interesting. You folks on the podcast always talk about the refs and the Leafs. And frankly, I think you're right about the bias. I know. He said, that said, last night was the first time in 17 games that the Canes had more power play time than the other team. Wow! I think it was just because it was the Panthers who are known for taking a ton of penalties. He said it might be worth talking about on the STP because there seems to be real provable bias here. Uh, he said, even without bunting in brackets, um, you know, you've talked a lot. Uh, you know, sorry, you've talked about this with the Canes recently. I'm sorry if, if sorry if you've already m mentioned it, but uh, the Canes have over 200 penalties uh, penalties for this year or, or power plays, uh, but um, they have 203. The Leafs have 184. It's a pretty big gap. It's a, that is a big gap, but that is something else too. Like like we saw that with the Leafs, where with bunting last season. And Dave Jackson went on another podcast in Toronto, who's a former ref, and said, well, Michael Bunting needs to earn his respect from the refs in this league. And, and so, so like, don't tell me, like, when their guys are saying it, you know, and so... And, and so you know that sentence means they do not respect him. Right. Just so that we're all... So Carolina is about... Understanding English here. Mid-pack in the league with teams like Boston, Calgary, St. Louis, where they've got about 200 to 207. What's the biggest differential? Is differential? Well, so right now I'm looking at covers, so they only are. I'm only looking at team offense power play. I, I haven't looked at the shorthanded stuff, but um, I mean the differential is San Jose has 162 penalties for, or sorry, power plays, and Colorado has 237. My goodness. Um, I <laughs> one of the reasons I love Tyler Bertuzzi is at the beginning of uh, every playoff, you realize how many damn scrums there are. Yeah, and how the Leafs don't know what to do in them. No, they don't. And I'll. And I'll by the way, he that guy is the Walking Dead. <laughs> he will. He knows how to get out of every headlock, and he is just bopping guys <laughs> right in the face. Yeah. Uh, by the way, the Leafs have a four, a delta of four between um, power plays and penalty kills. They have taken 180 penalties this year, so they haven't taken many. So there are every. It seems like every game they play in, it's two to three penalties per side. Great. That's what it is. It's dead even. Which like, is also weird, right? We all come into games with our assumptions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, without saying you suck stripes, um, you stink at your job, uh, you know, you keep job in the team, the game's rigged. Without saying any of that, 
just talking calmly like an adult. Mm -hmm. Can you please just look at the data of your performances and say to yourselves, that's a little odd. That's a little odd that Avalanche games have been called the same way for half a decade. Mm -hmm. High event. Mm -hmm. The Leafs have been called the same way for over half a decade. Low event. Mm -hmm. And that's odd. The Leafs don't play <laughs> the way that they did five years ago. That's crazy. They do, they do play differently. They play completely differently. So then my it's this team having roughly the same statistics in that category compared to two years ago, or like let's say just pre COVID. Let's say twenty nineteen. That's psychotic. That's well, not even they're not comparable. So let me ask you this. Is that helpful to the Leafs in the playoffs? Because now they've got Joel Edmondson, who along with Ben Sherratt, cross checked his way to the Stanley Cup final. Yeah. Um they've got, you know, Jake McCabe, Simon Benoit. Uh, Ilya Labushkin, these guys are big, mean. Um, and a bunch of dickheads. They got, they went out and they have a bunch of dickheads now. Yeah. Right. And really, like I'm looking at NHL defense is one of the ways that that Toronto was supposed to be different when they when they started with this new philosophy at the beginning of the Matthews era was get a bunch of defensemen that can move the puck, get it to the forwards, get it to the forwards. That was the philosophy, right? And it worked a bit. It worked. It worked in the regular season to an extent. Yeah. And now I think they're like, well, we need like one or we need guys that are big that can move the puck to the forwards. But um, if there's a scrum, I need somebody in there who's gonna wash, you know, face wash or do what Jake McCabe did with Garnet Hathaway last night and headlock him, just shut him down. You know, Garnet Hathaway hitting Matthews from behind, and it was a hit from behind. I don't care if it was a legal hit from behind; it was. That was so funny, by the way. The so he hits him, he hits him the way that he hits him, whether you thought it was a hit from behind or not. They review it and they see Matthews do this. Like, here, can you go to the three shot? This is this is what he did. This this coffee cup is the puck. That got a goal called back. He moved it like an inch. They saw the hits, they saw him getting mashed, and then they saw him move the puck an inch, and they went, This is the thing that's not allowed. Well, and and I I don't I, I think Garnet Hathaway did his job last night. He was going after Matthews, trying to get in his kitchen. He's and so I kept wondering, crazy. like, when is a Leaf player going to step up here and stop this guy? Because the Leafs have done that this year. And Domi, Domi and him got into it at the end of the game. They got their 10-minute game mis or ten minute misconduct. It was a little late in the game, but Domi did take him off the ice. Yeah. he's. It's great to have a guy who will do that, who just goes, nope, we're going together. You and me. It's in an 82-game season. You need it. You well, I think you need it in a seven-game seven series. A hundred percent. So uh, I don't fault Garnet Hathaway for doing what Garnet Hathaway is paid to do. That's what he's paid to do. Would love him as a Leaf. Until then, I will always remind him that he spat on a guy. <laughs> and, then, and then I'll forget all about it. And so, when people bring it up, I'll be like, that's AI. That's the thing that... <laughs> that's AI. You... The Gar thing. Garnet Hathaway, the, the Leaf? <laughs> Preposterous. No way. I, I think that I still, when I saw that last night, I thought, okay, that's why you want big, scary defense, but I also need some of the forwards to not let that happen. You can't let that happen. If if Matthews gets hit from behind like that, you you can't, this guy shouldn't continue playing. Uh, I was about to talk my shit and say it was a pretty peaceful night uh, regarded to Travis Konechny. And then I remembered something that I pointed out in the LFR yesterday. What's that? Uh, the Leafs play Carolina tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Then on the 19th, uh, I don't know if that's Monday or Tuesday, they're playing the Flyers again mm -hmm. in Philadelphia, and John Tortorella will be behind the bench. That game is going to be a carnival. <laughs> well, what did you think of uh, uh, Rocky Thompson getting mad at Sheldon Keefe for sending out his first power play unit at the end of the game? Well, they should have called the game. Should it? You're mad at Sheldon Keefe for what? Doing his job? What was the shorthanded goal for? I thought we were all stopping trying. You're mad at Sheldon Keefe for trying. What, what are you? What are you complaining about? So someone said, should the Leafs play Ryan Reeves on the power play more often? And they were joking because what the Leafs did was they just put their fourth line out there. Here's what they should have done: Tavares, Matthews, Nylander. Riley, Reeves, and just fire pucks off Reeves. <laughs> so that way you can say, you got scored on on the power play by Ryan Reeves. 
And you wouldn't have, you would have been scored on by like, I don't know, Tyler Bertuzzi mm -hmm. or something. You would have been scored on by one of them. But because you were a baby, an enormous baby about it, here's your Ryan Reeves power play goal for you. Well, they got to play them next week and they don't want any injuries, I think. That's what they're hoping for. If it's a blowout, Matthews, Tavares, <laughs> Nylander, Riley, Reeves. Losing Callie Yarncroak sure did, I don't, not to speculate, it sure did look like a shoulder thing. Um, uh, Keith said it wasn't a shoulder. Oh, thank God. And he said it wasn't a head. So you flick down those two spots on uh, guess who. And but he he's going to miss some time. He's going to miss some time. Here, wait. Now? Now. That was just some time. Five years is also some time. So I don't know what the hell some time means. Well, they said they'd have more clarity this morning, so we'll see. Yes. Haven't heard anything. Stop asking coaches doctor questions. They don't know. <laughs> what do you do to the lineup if if he's out? Uh, they, were and fine. they were fine for a month and a half, weren't they? But Marner was playing. Marner will come back. Ah, uh, you let Keith juggle. Yeah. I'm not like this part of the season is about figuring it out right now. They're gonna be in the playoffs. Let him juggle. Um, Robertson probably gets into the lineup. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That'll be good for him. Uh, oh, yeah. So, I mean, the simple solution you would think is you promote Matthew Nyes, I guess. Yeah, you put Nyes back where he was. And then you throw Robertson where Nyes is. Yeah. I wonder if um, Marner's going to play on Saturday. They said it's a, it's a high ankle sprain, which is... Weird Bad. because they said it, high ankle sprains are terrible oh, and keep painful. you out for months, but they said it's a very light sprain, which means it shouldn't be a high ankle sprain because you can't really get a, a light high ankle sprain. So the the reporting of that's a little funny, but it seems like a light sprain that should only keep him out for like a week or so. I, don't I think hope he's gonna be back Saturday. You know, for me, for Marner, just sit him until like the last three games. You don't need to play. Sure, you're fine. Yeah. Man. Just be healthy, hundred percent healthy. Because I can guarantee you, if you're going through Boston, you won't be healthy at the end of that series. No, or anybody. It's the playoffs. Yeah. So just be healthy. Go in healthy. The Flyers, should they make the playoffs? I mean, listen, they've been admirable this year, but you you look at the goaltending, um, the fact that they sold, like they're not going to win games because they're better than the other team. They're going to win games because they beat the fuck out of you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that is that's what they're gonna have to do. The NHL schedule has been doing weird stuff this year. I don't know why the Leafs are playing two times in Philadelphia on the span of ten days. Yeah, like, what, I don't know. what the hell is yeah, that? Yeah, that's <laughs> a good point. Don't they have two? <laughs> that's a really good point. <laughs> uh, why are you going to the same away game twice in uh, ten days? Like well, that makes no sense to me. They have a road and road and road. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Not a home and home, a road and road and road. <laughs> the Carolina game is on on Saturday is fun because of that that number you brought up, Adam. Like they've been absolutely robbed on penalties. I'm excited to see the game on Saturday to see if there's like a ton of infractions that aren't called on the on the Hurricanes. I'm maybe it'll go in the me Leafs' too. favor. Yeah, maybe it'll be like a perfect. You know those games that the Leafs have sometimes where it's like no penalties were called mm -hmm. and it's game 32 mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, so not nobody made one infraction. No, nobody made not a mistake. One? Yeah, not to one. go 17 games and you're a opponent has more power plays than you 17 straight games i'd be pissed seems like power play you, time it's a power play time sure seems like you might have a personal vendetta against rod brindamore or michael bunting or a combination of the team because brindamore if my research was correct has been fined twice for yelling at the refs one time in 2020 really? one time in 2021 uh so it happened during covid so that's probably why none of us remember it but he has had a contentious relationship with the ref. Maybe some people don't like him. And they don't forget. And they do, They have long memories. Yo, so Pat, yo, here's what I can't stand. Paul Maurice, of all the coaches, fuck the off! Ref, is the fuck worst off, of the refs. Off! And he's done it for so long that I feel like the refs don't internalize it anymore. They're just like, oh, that's Paul. It's mm -hmm. white noise. Yeah, it's, it's like it's like Brad Marchand licks a guy. And it's like, well, he's he's done so much other heinous shit that it's like licking him. That's not even that bad. No, this is how <laughs> an NHL ref goes to bed. All right, they just turn Is on. Brad Marchand, their, my friend. They, yeah, they turn <laughs> on their, their their Paul Maurice thing. Okay, good night. Fuck off. <laughs> His white noise machine, and they're just able to sleep right through it. They don't hear it. Like, they don't even hear it. He's oh. chewing his gum. I'm surprised he's never spat his gum onto his players while <laughs> saying, "Not fuck off." He doesn't say fuck off. Mm. Fuck off. <laughs> I just I I just find it funny that Rod Brendamore. Is I'm, just, like, I'm just guessing. Like I don't like, know about their personal relationship. Yes, but does but, like do we watch does, Panthers games? We see Paul Maurice, right? Yeah, yeah. but does he give uh, post game uh, interviews with a uh, 
uh, cheeky little whimsy. <laughs> yeah. Does it get a chuckle out of the reporters? Does he get a little? <laughs> he does. Is chuckle. It, is it just Rod Brandenburg is not known for his one-liners. I don't think. No. Or straight-ahead guy. Yeah. Yeah. I think like I don't know if his abrasive personality has rubbed refs the wrong way, but. There's no way that if you looked at the game tape of all of these 17 games that every single time the Hurricanes didn't earn at least equal power play time. It yep. sounds – it might be an anomaly. I don't know. I haven't checked the tape, but it sounds like <laughs> something's going on. It feels like it. Yeah. I think you're – I'm with you, Jess. <laughs> I'm with you. It's, it's you weird. Uh, Hurricanes fans, I feel for you. 2006 Carolina Hurricanes win the cup. Rod Brindamore, captain. Gets the Stanley Cup first, and uh, Gary Bettman tries to shake his hand. Does Rob Brindamore shake his hand? He does not. He does not. And that hmm. is a, that's a big... That that's, was uh, that's a great, a great little point there, Stephen Dangle. <laughs> also, um, He's my, lucky to get a job in the NHL not doing that. This is one of the craziest stats with Rod Brindamore. Um, he's not Colin Campbell's son. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, there were people who were like, you can't say that the, the the Panthers have some of the most penalties called against them in the league. You can't say that Gregory Campbell. It's horse shittery. <laughs> it's complete horse shittery. It's, it's about power plays and you got to take out, you got to extract all the horse shit stuff that happens in the final five minutes mm -hmm. of the third period of a bullshit game. You got to take out all the four on fours, like the stuff with Domi and Hathaway yesterday. It's funny. There was a, like a, like a blood cut off headlock in a game that we were talking about recently. I can't remember which one it was. And someone went, that happens every game. And I went, what? <laughs> and I, the, like, no, it doesn't. There was like a UFC chokehold, and I clicked on the profile Panthers fan. I'm like, oh, that's why you think it happens it does every, happen game. every game. <laughs> it's, okay, it happens in every game you watch. Uh. Maybe because I'm a Leaf fan, you know, and I've been watch, uh, you know, cheering for this bleeding heart team for yeah. Uh, last you're soft. Years. You're a snowflake. Maybe I'm a snowflake. Yeah, I. This you're just never a beta happens. male. You're oh, a beta male. I'm, you know, maybe just a little baby. Yeah. baby you know, what's I only got a few days on, left in this little fishbowl. You know what's gonna happen on Saturday? The Leafs are gonna get called for a million penalties because it's on Saturday night. You know, hockey night in Canada. And the refs and, are, and we pointed it, it out. You know what? The refs are angling for a good playoff spot. Yeah, Toronto. Everybody's gonna be watching. They're gonna call a million against uh, the Leafs. The Hurricanes are gonna get all the power plays, and then. When they're not playing Toronto, it'll go back to normal. See, I was thinking it was going to be 0 0. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the penalty too. count. I thought it was going to be another what? perfect game. <laughs> I think Adam's closer to right. Hey, yeah. hey like the refs are going to go out there and be like, oh, it's Keith and it's Brindamore. F you and F you too. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think about No, you. I think they show up and they're on their best behavior because everybody's watching. And then when when it's not Saturday night, you know, it's a Wednesday or a Tuesday, they go back to just calling everything. You could want. be right. What What is the NHL record for four on four hockey in a game? <laughs> That's what I predict. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. And it is that time of year where therapy could sure help. It's good. That's it's every time of year. I know. Honestly. I feel that like you're right. You're right. And I think that the reason I say that is off the winter. Coming off the winter, sometimes you're like, I need to shake this off. I need to talk to someone yes. about all the things. I'm still thinking about stuff with my family from Christmas. Whoa. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you should go to therapy a lot sooner. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Listen, and here's the great thing. You can get matched in 48 hours or less. You can do it over text. You can do it over FaceTime. You can do it over phone. It's up to you. And if you don't vibe with your therapist, we always talk about this, switch it up. No big deal. They'll find you one that works for you. And here's the thing. If you want to give therapy a try, you should visit betterhelp.com slash SDP. That will get you 10% off your first month. Remember, it's designed to be convenient and flexible, and it should work with your schedule, right? And so hopefully you, you get there sooner than your... So you then can Christmas. solve your things from Christmas okay. within the first like two months of the year. I'm fine. That would be, yeah. be nice. Don't be this guy. Don't be yeah. the guy. Don't be yeah. the I'm fine guy. Don't be that. <laughs> don't be the I'm fine. Don't be the I'm fine guy. You don't need to be fine. How about if you were great? Therapy can help with that. Again, it's betterhelp.com slash SDP to, to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash SDP. Getting close to the playoffs. Whoa. Stakes are getting higher. Eat those... Cloud stakes. The Detroit Red Wings are taking on the Buffalo Sabres tomorrow. And if the Sabres win, and remember, Detroit's lost seven straight. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know you, who you take on BetMGM, but it's going to be that. This is like for the this is for the playoffs right here. This and like the Islanders. It's low key a huge matchup. And the and here's the great thing. BetMGM is an official sportsbook partner of the NHL. 
Oh, it's the king of sportsbook. And so you should check it out because if you're if you're looking at games like this, this is where I love playoff races. I'm so glad we're actually getting one because it didn't look like we were going to. 100%. If, if th this is the time where it gets fun. And especially if you're like us and you're like a casual observer and you're like, it's Saturday afternoon, I'm throwing on Detroit and Buffalo and I'm throwing two bucks on it. Who are you throwing two bucks on, Steve? Ooh, uh, you know what? I've been mean to Detroit. I'm sprinkling on them, snapping the streak. Jesse, what about you? Uh, I'm looking at that game, and I'm taking uh, David Perron anytime point. Oh, that's, that's, that's what I'm looking at. You're looking for, for the gutsy veteran move here. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not gonna take a on the money line for either team because I don't have a read on who's gonna win that game. But I think David Perron gets a point. I would in take that game. A Bowen Byram shots over. Oh, that's oh. that's a really good one. I like that. Okay. If, if UPL's a net. Like a million saves. Yeah, but is Detroit going to get a million shots? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, nothing says W like BetMGM. They're the king of sports books. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. Must be 19 years of age or older. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. And if you have questions or concerns about your gambling or someone close to you, please contact Connects Ontario at 1-866-531-2600 to speak to an advisor free of charge. The Detroit Red Wings have lost seven straight games. We mentioned it earlier. Lucas Raymond and Ben Sherratt got into a fight at practice. Then Ben Sherratt stuck up for Lucas Raymond during the game. Love that. That's hockey, baby. And they had to sit in the hockey box together. That's. Uh, then Ben Sherratt gave up the puck at the end of the game, and it eventually led to Nick Bukestad scoring the game bad, winner. Bad turnover. Bad turnover. Red Wings were booed off the ice. Now, the Islanders also lost. But they have a game in hand. And as I told you earlier, the Wings have gained exactly one point in the last 14 days. That's wild. The Red Wings sit they were just so good. Here, here's the athletic write up on it. The Red Wings sit just three points ahead of the hard charging Sabres, the team that beat them 7 3 on Tuesday, and coincidentally, their next opponent on the schedule Saturday afternoon. I understand why the Colorado Avalanche made the Bowen Byram trade. And you could argue they got better for it. Middle sat scored mm -hmm. uh, for them the other day. That trade has the potential to be a frigging steal for the Buffalo Sabres. With an already looking like a stacked defense. It's it, It'll be the best left side in hockey in extremely short order. Dude, it's a first overall pick, a first overall pick, and a fourth overall pick. That's crazy. That's just, They don't have a pick outside of the top four on the left. Mm -hmm. That's goofy. It is goofy. And it's exciting. And if you're a Sabres fan, you might have just you might just stumble into the playoffs here. The Caps might too. So on top of what they have in their lineup already, the youth they have in their lineup already, uh Scott Wheeler, if I'm not mistaken, ranked them the best prospect system in all of hockey. <sighs> Look out. <laughs> Look out. It's coming. Man. They're good. They're good and they're gonna get better. Now for Detroit. I had a look at some of their advanced stats, and I'm just going to go with something basically like PDO, sure. which is mm -hmm. imperfect, but I just thought we'd look at that. They're Team all stat. imperfect, damn it. Um, yeah, well, every time you bring a stat, people are like, well, that's actually not the full picture. I'm like, I, I don't have time to sit here and write a thesis on it. No We're single doing a sports stat show. can give you an entire well, picture. Well, you give it to me then. Yeah. <laughs> I want yours then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Like, we, I don't need 40 pages on this. I just, you know, we need to kind of look at what's, some of the reasons. What's their PDO? It's almost exactly an even 100. That's on the so, season. This is what they are. Well, I think they are a little bit of what they were at the beginning, and they weren't exactly that. And I think they're a little bit of what they are now, but they're not exactly that either. And so Detroit probably is a team that should be labeled as good. They're, and they're gonna ride the edge. They're not mm -hmm. able to cope with the loss of Dolan Larkin. And which is that's huge. That's an egregious way to build your hockey team where you lose one guy and everything falls apart. I see a lot of Detroit Red Wings fans being like, you know what? We need a lot of veterans in the room to balance out this losing streak. Oh, wait, we have all of those guys. What the hell is happening? They have and, a ton of veterans. Yeah, no, that's that's their that's the sarcasm in it. Oh, they, okay. they have Perron. They have Kane. They have Ben Sherratt. They have all these guys already to support the young talent. And losing Larkin shouldn't cause you to go into an abyss. Well, and the the more concerning part, it's not like the, the Hurricanes. It's not like the Red Wings have ignored the center ice position. They've spent a lot of money there. Mm -hmm. um, they have JT Comfer, first line center who's, right now. Yeah, who's they filling in. Who's they, and they spent big money on him. Joe Valeno's their second line center right now, draft pick. Andrew Kopp, hmm. 
That was another big ish, big ish, medium mm -hmm. free agent who they went out and signed, and Austin Zarnick is their fourth line center. But like Comfer and Cop should be enough. Should be enough to stop the entire deck of cards from falling down. House of cards. I screwed up the whole thing. It should be enough. House of decks. House of decks. <laughs> Uh, it should be enough to get you more than one point in the last two weeks. Yeah, this is just one of those. It happens to teams sometimes, but this couldn't be a worse time. Now, the good thing what do you mean, is... What do you mean one point? They're 0-7. Oh, no, but they lost one oh. in overtime. Oh, they got the overtime they loss? Got a, oh, they okay. got one point. Oh! Oh, hey! No, hey. Oh, yeah. uh, so, <laughs> the, the, the thing is, for Red Wings fans... If you go back to February 28th, uh, they're 0-7. Yeah, but if you go back to the beginning of the season, that's I, th I think that's I think that's uh, that's currently. that's more than Stop two it. weeks, right? Yeah, <laughs> I think just that's no points in two weeks. I'm just saying that's pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, they're it's they're, they're zero and seven. But if you go back to sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I think the point is that usually what happens after a losing streak like this, unless you're the Toronto Maple Leafs, okay. That's a huge asterisk because the Toronto Maple Leafs were a good team several years in the early 2010s and went through a losing streak much like Detroit and they never not they never didn't lose right so like Detroit has a chance to get off this this ride that they're on and come back and actually look really good and get their confidence back up the Toronto Maple Leafs when we saw them do it they never did it and if Detroit does make the playoffs this could set them up and I'm being overly optimistic and generous here sure. for like a good little win streak going into the playoffs and the hot teams do well in the playoffs. Absolutely. They were hot. Like, it's not like they were ho-hum and then they randomly started losing. They were ridiculously hot mm -hmm. to skyrocket into the playoff spot they were in. I think they passed the Leafs briefly. And They did, actually. Yes, they did. And mm -hmm. now they're not even there. Um, yeah. it, every team finds a way to get out of it. You know who got out of... Uh, you know who looked like they would never win again? And then they were like 500, a little above 500 for a month. The Sharks, they lost 10 straight games by a billion and then uh, proceeded to win a bunch of games. Everyone, and are currently the last place team. In the and are currently the last place. Yeah, I know. They followed it by losing a bunch of games. They turned into a pumpkin. But what I'm saying is <laughs> like if like the amount of time left in the season is about a month. Sure. If they have the month preceding that losing streak that the Sharks had, there's a real good chance they make the playoffs. Sure. I but I look at this team that had just just so many turnovers yep. that were ugly uh last night that led directly to goals. And Alex Lyon, who is unfortunately turned into a pumpkin after being one of the hottest goalies in the league during this losing streak. Like he's lost, I think, six of the games. He is an eight fifty five save percentage. You can't win a hockey game if you have an eight fifty five save percentage. Some of that is on the defense who are causing these bad turnovers, but they're not getting the goaltending out of Lyon or James Reimer, and their defense is collapsing and their offense is falling apart without Dylan Larkin. It's a disaster. Well, and who's supposed to be their starting goalie Villiuso. Mm -hmm. and he's, he's out, even, out you know and he's injured so it's uh, some significantly bad things have gone bad super bad for the Red Wings but to see them barely even be in the fight um, over the last couple weeks anyway it's surprising is Steve Eisenman's job in trouble if they end up missing the playoffs and this streak continues throughout the rest of the year. I think Derek Lalonde's job is in trouble. I think Steve gets no. one more. They got to make the playoffs. This team, The Illich family wants them to make the playoffs. They're done. They're they done sell more pizzas. Next year's when those those conversations happen, I think. No. You don't yeah. think if they don't if they don't pick this up, you don't think that their Derek Lalonde's job's not not a chance. I think there's a question. I think that's a conversation that they need to have, like the the management above Eisenman, the family, and all that. Like I think, like they need to seriously look at moving on. I I think coaches love saying, "Listen, give me a goalie." Um, and also we were good. We were perfectly fine mm -hmm. until we lost our captain. Mm -hmm. I I think Eisenman has a lot of slack. A lot of runway in Detroit. And Derek Lalonde practically just got there. I, I think they're both fine. Um, I'm just throwing you throwing this at you guys. Marner, Yarncroak, and Bush did not skate in practice this afternoon. That makes sense. But they all shoot right. Yeah. <laughs> ah! um, if it's, it's been five years of no playoffs. I don't know. For the Red Wings? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like, Eisenman, you, 
he's had zero success during his entire tenure. I feel like they would have expected within five years of your stint here in Detroit, you would have been able to be in the playoffs at this point. And this year it looked like the year, okay, you're all good, but now you're going to fail again. I think the temperature is turned up. Mm-hmm. Um, Lalonde, I, I just feel like that'd be unfair. Um, he just got there and he's got like a winning track record. Lalonde was on the Lightning when they won. Eiserman helped build the foundation that they won with, but he wasn't there when he, they won. He won none of those cups in Zero in Tampa. of those cups. Hey, that's how long he's been in Detroit. Or at very least not in Tampa. Not the same well, same thing. <laughs> yep. Yep. He uh the conversation, if there were anybody else, it would we'd be a lot louder about him. Right. They're not firing Steve. Eisenman. The pedigree of the name gives them more than that. Has to. Yeah. Not a chance. I, I think you're able to That's sell fair. it as we were close. We were in the hunt. Uh, we fell off because of uh, a couple factors. We're going to get stronger this year and we will make the playoffs next year. If you don't, that's when I think the real serious conversations happen. It's not happening this offseason. Um, Corey Perry's contract was settled between the NHLPA and the Blackhawks and Corey Perry. And that's all we know. There will be no grievance filed. So what that insinuates, uh, and what I'm blown away by is the lack of coverage on this, is it insinuates that whatever was whatever happened... Um, the NHL and the PA and the Blackhawks all agree that it's very likely Corey Perry's contract should not have been torn up. Or at very least, if he were to challenge it and file a grievance, that he would have a pretty good chance of winning. So when, it, when the NHL feels it's right, yes, like with concussions, yeah. as in because concussions don't happen in the NHL. No. Right? If just ask them. Good for Gary. They they will fight that tooth and nail to the end. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you know about the Blackhawks, but the Blackhawks basically used to run the NHL and have been owned by the same family since the 1920s. And that same family are part of the executive council. And, you know, they're one of the the fave eight, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, So for them to say, well, we got to settle this. what what, What that to me means is... They didn't want any of this coming out, A. B, they didn't feel like they had a good case. Because I will tell you, the NHL will fight you if they believe that they've got a good case. And I think that is interesting. And I don't know what it means. But I do find that interesting, don't you? Can I, can I read this tweet? Sure, yeah. From Frank Zervalli. Hey, Matt, you can put it up. Uh, oh, Jesse, there you go. Great job. Uh, sounds like there is a small salary cap charge coming for Blackhawks as a result of the settlement between Chicago, Corey Perry, uh, the NHL and NHLPA after what Perry's camp alleged was an improper contract termination. Rather than grievance, a financial resolution was reached. Um, every one of the 31 other teams should be screaming bloody murder. So they're able to just get out from under a contract? No, Adam. There's a small salary no. cap charge. There was a financial resolution. It was reached. End of story. Don't ask questions. This is how we run the league. We are, do need we do need our reporters down there to ask those questions. We, do we not? This is how the NHL runs shit. It's we did this behind closed doors. You are not allowed to ask about it. And here is our resolution. It's nonsense. And well, and I go back to Mike Richards when I look at this. Mike Richards, L.A. Kings. Also nonsense. Also nonsense. Uh, uh, there was it was at the time understood he was a- arrested at the border with some pills that he shouldn't have had. Whatever. I don't know why he was bought out, but he's on the Kings buyout list at 700 grand or whatever it is until 2031 or something. And nobody knows. That, not the full capture. And not the full capture. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows why. When How Shane, do you get away with that? If you want a recent example, Shane Pinto, when he was suspended this, this season. 41 games. He yep. got 41 games for gambling reasons that are unknown, specifically what he did. We know through some reporting and what's been speculated, but the NHL did not say what he did because they run this secret society where they're just allowed to do whatever they want at any point and make up charges and rules when they want resolutions. Nowhere in the rule book does it say you get a cap charge for whatever happened. They just made this up. We're all focusing on Vegas and cap circumvention from Vegas. Uh, uh, uh. No, 
They followed the rules. They finagled them. You know, maybe you bend the rules a little bit. But that's what the rules are there for. They're there mm -hmm. to be bent. This, oh, yeah. is, this is extraordinarily black and white, is it not? All NHL players have a guaranteed contract. They have a guaranteed contract. They ripped his up. They didn't I, buy him out. Presumably on a morality clause. Mm -hmm. They ripped it up, and all parties involved appear to be like, ah, he was a little wrong. And the Blackhawks were also a little wrong. So and that's they're like, why they're going to get a little them. charge. Yeah. Which isn't going to affect anything, by the way. Well, I think because yeah, I, I assume it, the cap charges for this season, yeah, and not going forward. They are, even though he so, had a two-year deal, they're like thirty million under the cap. It, it doesn't matter. It's completely preposterous. It's a made-up charge. It's, it's right and wrong. Was, was it right to terminate his contract or not? And I think here's what happened. They, they don't. Here's say. what happened. They don't say whatever it was. That's that's absurd. Whatever it was. The Blackhawks don't have any public brand trust with their fans or the NHL at large anymore after the Kyle Beach situation. I After what happened to Kyle yeah. Beach? No, let me finish this sure, one. Sure, sure. After what happened with Kyle Beach, the Blackhawks has to be black and white. Yes. But here's the problem. When you do that, and they needed to do that, and they need to be extremely like, they can't just be at the line. They need to be above the line because mm -hmm. they got to gain public trust back. When you rip up the contract inappropriately which they've just acknowledged that they did. They don't have to come out and say, guys, this, this contract should have never been ripped up or there's a, some gray area. The reality is, do they make a financial settlement? Are they paying? They're paying. So that means there's, there's a pretty good case that they couldn't or shouldn't have done it and they did it and the league's going to be fine with that because the league is trying desperately to rehab the Blackhawks brand. That's what's going on. That's why the that's listen. I, I'm not a I'm not a, a truther. That's like oh well. That's why they got the first round pick for Bedard. I don't think that's what happened. <laughs> I actually think that they. That's just what happened. The show, the the Hawks were so bad, um, and I think, but I do think the NHL is going to do everything it can to rehab this brand. Can I think that they're going to go harder for this brand than they probably would for a lot of other markets. So. We, small cap charge. We don't know what the cap charge is. No, I hope cap friendly already. Like, I hope they know. No, I doubt it. But uh, can I tell you what I bet it is? So Corey Perry makes his two million dollars signing bonus, mm -hmm. which he already made. That's in his mm -hmm. bank. Already made it. Uh, he made roughly, I think, five hundred grand. So it was a it was a four million dollar contract. Two million of it was signing bonus. Then he played a quarter of the season with the Blackhawks. So math ish. I believe that would take him up to about two point five million. Mm -hmm. Then there's all the money that he's going to make uh, with the Edmonton Oilers. And I'm just looking that up right now. The, the cap mm -hmm. charge will be the remainder. The Chicago, they're, they're going to make Corey Perry whole. The seven, Chicago seven, five. Blackhawks are currently fifty eight million dollars under the cap. They have fifty eight <laughs> million dollars in cap. How space. is that? Oh, because it's the end of the season. Because the LTIR and end of the season, all that nonsense. This doesn't mean anything. It, it means it, absolutely <laughs> nothing. It literally means nothing. And the question is, hey, Gary, hey, who is ever under Gary making the decision for this uh, mediation? Did they do something wrong? The only Let us know they didn't. The only way it would mean anything is if the cap charge continued into next season. Otherwise, it's completely they just wash their hands of it. It's, it's so nonsense. It's it's it's, it's complete a, bullshit. And you know what? Just like with Mike Richards, it's gonna go away and we'll probably yeah. never hear the details. It's still on the cap friendly page. Oh yeah, you can go look <laughs> it up. It's just it's it's weird. It's like these are the rules until until we want to make up rules on the spot so they fit the public narrative, whatever we're trying to get out there. Were Which you is save the Blackhawks brand before we torpedo it completely? Yeah. Were you or weren't you allowed to do what you did? We don't know. It appears not, but maybe who? <laughs> I don't know. P Perry or the Blackhawks? It appears both sides. Oh, great! Because the Blackhawks well, were not happy about it. Glad we said yeah. that then. Oh, uh, we got all the answers here, guys. It's yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And you know what? Here's the thing. Just like with Shane Pinto, although the story has made its way through circles, uh no. there's NDAs signed. No, don't worry. 
I won't. Um, no, I mean, like, there's been no answer. There's been no real answer. Yeah. yeah there's no been, formal answer. There's been the story that floats around that's relic. You know, it's broken telephone, right? You hear things, but you're like, okay, I've heard it from five different people now, and it's generally this, but I don't know what the full story is. You can never verify it. And if we want to, like, even go down the no answers things, even the Pierre Dorian de Donoff situation, where they lost a draft pick and all that stuff, and they got fined and he lost his job, yeah. that wasn't specifically outlined what how he messed up the contract details like the nhl didn't say oh yeah dorian filed this paperwork and then hit delete on this thing about the contract no trade no trade clause is what i should be saying no trade clause in that they didn't specifically say that they just announced the punishment now that story has floated around that story too. we kind of know because it's been out there but they never said it they so, never reveal these details it's bad put it that way yeah. the first <laughs> response under the frank cervalli tweet is uh a ottawa senator's account going find them a first round pick they still haven't been fined a pick for anything. The black anything that's happened over the last three years. Not well, a because fucking pick. and 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 that's you think crazy. you think as Leaf fans that we're lying to you when we say there's an NHL executive and there are teams that are favored here. Don't don't tell me that there isn't, guys. The Leafs are amongst them. That's like, that's, that's, they're, that's mm, it's like that's, that's like amongst. saying the Rangers are amongst them. They're not. They're not. <laughs> one they're, one of the owners likes to go play dad rock music in this band. That, <laughs> Watch the Knicks, and he doesn't know he has a hockey team. That's true. And watch his fear get get not attended by the Nashville Predators. So this, I imagine, will not come up at the NHL GM meetings, but they are next week, and I thought I'd run you through some of the itinerary. Are you interested? Sure. So first thing is they do want to start talking about teams ragging the puck in OT. And what I mean by that is holding on to it, going back, resetting, and killing time. And what some people are saying is there should be an, an over and back rule like there is in basketball. Like if once you cross oh. the blue line, you can't go back across the blue line with the puck. Uh, I love it, uh, but uh, rightfully so. It's going to be a long process before that happens, and it won't probably happen this year, but they are tabling it. What does the NHL hate? No, well, I was about to Offense. say stoppages. They love work stoppages, but they, uh, they hate whistles. Um, this they do? Gonna, yeah. This, they, they don't want to stop an action. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Yeah. They want it to keep going. And I think this has the makings of an idea that sounds great on paper that sucks in practice. Okay. Okay. So there's that one. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, yeah I, it could work. It could work. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a new NHL GM executive. So guys like Doug Armstrong, Steve Eiserman, uh, Kevin Shevel Dayoff on that list. Uh, they are going to meet with the league. We don't know specifically what yet, but they are. So there's obviously just like with NHL teams, there is about eight teams that are a part of an NHL executive, like the ownership group, and they're the ones that make all the decisions. As long as Gary gets those teams to agree, everybody else has to agree. The GM one will be different. Uh, the GM is like there's like six of them. Um, we don't know quite what it's going to be, but it's supposed to be senior-ish officials in the league mixed in with some younger guys. Obviously, Doug Armstrong, longtime St. Louis. Kyle Dubas will not be on it. Kyle Dubas is not on the list. <laughs> no. Surprise, surprise. Uh, but a guy like Eiserman, who has been in the league a long time and obviously Detroit and an important franchise, so he'll be a part of it. Um, what, that, you go? <laughs> yo, Steve Eiserman's uh, name brand could deadlift an elephant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that name... <laughs> Has taken him a lot of places, man. It's well, he crazy also, he's on that. He built the Tampa Bay Lightning. Julian Breezebois. Yeah, how many cups he got? Won the cup with the Tampa I Bay. I know, Bay. but let's be honest. I, that is an Iserman build. How many cups he got? That's an Iserman build, guys. I won't. As an exec. I won't take any. As an, yes, as as an exec. <laughs> um, uh, now, uh, the last one, and I thought you go. Oh, actually, no, I should mention while we bring up Doug Armstrong, he will be the GM of Team Canada in 2026. He's also nice. the executive league. So he's going to start picking the GMs and the coaches for things like uh, World Championship, like Gretzky Holinka Cup, things like that, which I think is interesting. Cool. And yeah, uh, did now you put the, my name on the list. They did not put you on the list. I, I think you need a ring it. first, man. No, really? Yeah, Doug's Shit. got his ring. Ah, damn team, team Canada starting goalie, Uka Pekka Luka. <laughs> <laughs> I do Backed it, up by American Jake Ottinger. Yeah. Late, uh, Lucas Raymond? <laughs> Get out of here. You're on the team. We're trading Tavares off Team Canada for Lucas Raymond. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, and then the last one here, and I thought you guys would find this interesting. So um, let me ask you, hmm. you, you who is watching and listening to this, how do you feel about George Peros? If it's negative, you're not alone. 
Apparently, NHL GMs are said to be just as pissed as you are about how inconsistent it is. And George, as he does every year, has to give a presentation to the general managers. And apparently this year is going to be a big one because the GMs are furious with how things have gone. Maddie, I thought that camera switch to me was a little ominous. That was a little odd. I usually side with Peros on everything. How dare you? How dare you? Uh, you know what you just reminded me of? What's that? We never talked about Matt Remby. Okay, but let's talk Are about Are you going right to talk now. about what it's we're It's related. Talk- okay, what about it? It's maybe the first decision where uh, they've gone... Up, sorry, first non-Leaf suspension where they've suspended a player more games than I thought they would. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's the problem. Mm-hmm. That is the problem. That's the problem. I think Matt Rempe, it's like, we need to calm this man down and Holy- keep, he's going to kill himself. It, it, or someone else. Yeah. Dude, he could, that could easily be his third suspension. Easily. What and he's he just been said is very encouraging, I think, because the fact that people in the league are also upset with George Peros is encouraging. So maybe there'll be some change because important people in the league are upset at this. Not the Panthers AGM, though. I, I, I think that's important. Uh, he's right on board. I No, but I, I think you're right, Jesse. And they watch the games like we do. Yeah. GMs, believe it or not, are amongst the biggest fans of their f- particular franchise. Imagine being a paid fan. That's what a general manager is. I'm going to put this team together, and I'm going to be such a fan that I'm going to work for them 12 hours a day, seven days a week, almost every day of the next four or five years of my life. Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan, and I get really pissed off when I see bad shit happen and, and there be no punishment. When Iserman was on Agent Provocateur and you guys just asked him, hey, like, what's your day like? And his day is like, I start my day off with hockey, I exercise for a bit, and then I do hockey things for 12 hours, and I sleep a little, and I do hockey things. Yeah. Like, all he does is just work for the Red Wings 24-7. Yes. And it's it's a it's a fun, hard life. Yes. Yeah. It's it's <laughs> um whatever they get paid. I, I bet their hourly rates a lot less than you'd think. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, not that it's not high, but you know. But if you break it down by hours that they're doing hockey stuff, it's all the time. Yeah. I think, what was it? Babs, because he's a lunatic. I couldn't do this. But uh, he used to show up for like the practice rig at like 6 a.m. Yeah, but part like, of the why? reason he did that is he had to take the gardener. Okay. No, no, I'm serious. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure he did an interview about that. He's like, well, I got to take the gardener. So I beat traffic. By leaving when uh, no one's awake. Yeah, fair. I would be exhausted every day. Can't wait. I hate waking up that early. I, uh, Anyways, um, the the GM's being upset. I think is good news. I think that's good news. Yeah. Now, here's where I get worried, because when and I and I get annoyed with with um, and I see this specifically with people that have never that have it's been a long time since they've been fans. Like they've been in the league working, they've been in the league playing, and they forget what it's like to be a fan. Because a fan is very frustrating. You're the one who's the most invested in this team, and yet you have the least control over it. That's why fans lose their minds. And so when you see a former player say uh, say something that's like, I can't believe the fans are reacting this way. Or you see a former ref or a former GM, and they all say, I can't believe the fans would be this way. It's because you're not one, mm-hmm. and you haven't been for a long time. You could say you're a fan of hockey, but you're not like a fan. You've worked there. It's different. Let's be honest. And so what I find tends to happen, especially with player safety, is the angrier fans get, the more indignant player safety gets. Oh, yeah. The more, you idiots don't know what you're talking about, they get. I wonder what the reaction to the GMs being mad, GMs being the biggest fans, right? What will that reaction be? Will because Because they seem like the kind of guys who are like, oh, everybody's against me, that means I'm doing a good job. Hmm. If everybody hates me, I'm doing a good job. I think that's how they look at it. Mm-hmm. And so if every GM doesn't like you and doesn't think you're doing a good job, what will the GM's airing of grievances, this festivus of GM meetings, mm-hmm. what will that what will that actually accomplish? And I think that's how the NHL looks at it. Like, you know, they talk about how it's such a hard job and and how everybody hates you. And and at a certain point you kind of go, "Okay, I think that they expect that." I, uh, listen, you all know how I feel about George Peros. I've, I've thrown him enough verbal punches. Uh, the NHLPA wears some of this. Uh, they do. Um, we talked about that Pavel Bure uh, thing with Shane Churla where he got fined 500 bucks. <laughs> it's like three decades later, and the maximum fine is still five grand. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's because it's under the CBA. The NHL would ding him more, but it's negotiated by the NHLPA, 
who represents players both uh, victim and aggressor, um, has argued that the fine should be teeny tiny and inconsequential. And uh, uh, George Peros's job is made harder by the fact that fines mean nothing. Yes. Which makes it odd that he keeps relying on... Like, what I would love is for him to be like, you know what? The fining system is completely invalid, so every fine is a one-game suspension. <laughs> but he's never going to do it. The, the whole thing is out of whack, and it's not just George. I guess is what I'm saying. But also, he does a terrible job. There, I had to get one in. <laughs> uh, a couple last things I wanted to mention. Did you see the clip of Bedard and Felino talking on the bench? Yes, and I love them. Um, Felino saying, I have so much to teach you, but I don't have enough contract time. <laughs> and, and then Bedard saying something. He's like, I'm, and then Felino going, I, I'm going to have to stay in Chicago like five years after I retired so I can teach you everything, which I think is cool. That means he's angling for a job. Yeah. Well, and he should. And you know what? Good for Felino. I think that's cool. Yeah, he's also got two more years on his contract at four point five million. Yeah, he signed that extension. That's interesting because <laughs> uh, I I think sometimes uh, life throws you a curveball, and uh, there was a long time where Nick Felino's future was with this. I, b I believe it was the Sudbury Wolves because he he played there or he's from there or both. I can't remember. Um, I know he looked into ownership. Um, of the team, and I believe it didn't work out. But now he can be the Bedard whisperer, and he could be an exec with the Blackhawks when the Bedard dynasty finally kicks in, uh, whenever that is. And Played three years for the Wolves. Uh, he's from Buffalo, New York. Oh, oh yeah. yeah he's oh well. So he's one of those. Um, he's from Buffalo because his dad played in Buffalo. Oh, I think he's from from Sudbury, but he was born in Buffalo. Yeah, it says uh, on his cap friendly, he's got nationality, dual citizenship. Yes. United oh, cool. States and Canada, birthplace, Buffalo, New York. But yeah, three years with the Wolves and parts of a couple seasons. I'm pretty sure he's Canadian, but he plays for the United States. Oh yeah, there it is. He plays for mm -hmm. the U.S. Uh, mm -hmm. program. Yeah. But it's it, what, a, what an interesting little wrinkle in his life. Did you also see the story that um, the night Bedard broke his jaw... Uh, Felino, his wife, and his dog all went to go stay with him. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Yeah, like, it's. I, I you think, need guys like that. Yeah, he's, he's worth the money. He's in charge of Connor Bedard. Like that's kind of his new role in life. He will end his career taking care of this kid. It, it's possible at the end of his deal, they deal him at the deadline to a contender to do right by him. But I, I think he's going to work for the Blackhawks for a long time. Hmm. Also, was it uh, was it Taylor Radish and not Nick Foligno with the broken jaw stuff? Because I know Radish takes care of him a lot too. I, no, I'm pretty sure it was Foligno. It was Foligno? Okay. Could have been Radish, but I, I think okay. it was Foligno. Radish is, uh, didn't he just get claimed off waivers by someone? He's, he's not in Chicago anymore. Oh, right, okay. but he was at the time of the broken jaw. Ah. Yeah. No. Anyways, we'll figure out the story after. Um, <laughs> lastly, uh, and you'll love this, Anthony DeClair has scored in both games since joining the Lightning. He looks pretty good. He sure does. He's got people to pass him the puck, right? Like It's it's a good pickup. Sometimes it's hard as a goal scorer. Like he, I don't know. Can't make it out of thin air. No. So it, he's uh, he's a great finisher, man. Great finisher. Good pickup. Now, are we doing the press conference today? Or are we? Yeah, ready? I got a couple quick cuts. Let's go, baby. The presser. Conference. Uh, to clarify, quick Google, it was uh, Taylor Radish. So Chris oh. Chris Vosters uh, tweeted accidentally what? that the night Connor Bedard broke his do uh, jaw, Nick Felino, his wife Janelle, and the Felino family dog came over and spent the night at Connor's apartment so he wouldn't be alone. Tremendous gesture by the Felinos and a great relationship between Connor and Nick. I need to apologize, he quote tweeted uh, on the 14th. So that would have been uh, yesterday. Uh, I need to apologize. Connor is referring to Taylor Radish, his wife, also named Taylor. That's hey, funny. Taylor and Taylor Radish. That's funny. That's cool. And the Radish family dog. Apologies for the mix up. Too many good guys on this team. So there you go. That's why he literally tweeted Nick Foligno and you read the story and it says Nick Foligno and then he clarifies that it was actually Taylor Radish. So oh. yeah, so we're both kind of right. High five. <laughs> there, you uh, there you go. <laughs> also, um, the Radish family lives next door to 
uh, Bedard in their in the apartment building that they share together. Oh, that's so cool. They live in the same apartment building. Oh, they, yeah. That makes it seem <laughs> like they didn't have to go out of their way. Yeah, but still. No, it's no, it's stupid now. Bedard and uh, Radish are neighbors in the same apartment building and share a close bond. So that was. Oh, cool. that's cool. No, that's actually really cool. That's really cool. Yeah, he considers that. Radish his older brother. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet. Stop oh yeah, it. so Nick Felino, bad guy. It wasn't him. Oh man. <laughs> Noted rap. bad guy Nick Felino. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, he didn't go help Bedard, so bad guy. All you right. Know what? I don't think he's gonna work for the Blackhawks anymore. No, probably not. <laughs> uh this is from Adam P Man. Adam, is this your uh, alias on Discord? This is what my uh, that's my na- nickname in high school, P Man. <laughs> Adam P Man on Discord writes this. Uh, how fired up is Steve knowing that the next chapter is just around the corner? This is from what chapter? Uh, so they 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 wrote that and they have a picture of Craig Morgan on Twitter who writes oh, the no. Arizona State Land Department Board of Appeals has approved the application. Now we await public posting and then of course the auction. So the Arizona State Land Department Board of Appeals unanimously approved a $68.5 million appraisal for a portion of land in Phoenix, where the Coyotes hope to build an arena. That means the land department can sell the land at auction, but the date for the auction must be advertised for 10 weeks. So in the next 10 weeks, there's going to be an auction. Oh, Steve's falling asleep. Anybody listening, Steve's doing a sleeping uh, he's mocking falling asleep right now. Uh, so the yeah, they're going to have an auction for a piece of land, and the Arizona Coyotes are going to bid on it, and they have approval to bid on this land so they can build an arena. So it's going to happen within the next 10 weeks. We're going to find out if they have land for an arena. I want to be alive less than I did 30 seconds ago. What do you guys think? Also, Adam P-Man added... I don't. How funny would it be if Adam outbids the Coyotes just to spite Steve? Uh, <laughs> well, I, I think it's hilarious that the way I read the story, and I kept it out of the show because I didn't want to make Steve angry in case something else got him angry. But I uh, wish I had a veto card. What they had... Not a topic. Uh, what The way it was framed when I read it, Jesse, is mm-hmm. the Coyotes have been given permission to bid on a piece of land. And like that was the headline Holy of the Holy fuck! Like that Stop is, the presses. Yeah, so they, they had to submit an application for the land, and the application for the land is now approved. Now they just have to go to the auction and pay and pay the highest money amount of money for yeah. the land. Which so is, so you know, which is encouraging. I, I want to know, you know, what what CJ or what Elliot or you know any of these guys would say uh, about I don't. it because I don't because but, there was to me it's like. Some, at All Star, it was like something's got to change here. We got to know in the next few weeks. And now it appears that we don't. And it goes back to what the Blackhawks did with Corey Perry, which is <laughs> the rules don't matter. We set the, oh, we set the deadline. The rules don't matter. There he goes. Anybody Steve. listening? Steve walked out. Steve's gone. He got up from his chair. All right, we're done, Steve. We'll move it back. Come on back. I, I think it's a very interesting point that no, we're not done. One, one, oh, sorry. Just, to, just to confirm what Adam said, it's, it was dire. It was dying. At All-Star Week, at weekend, it was this is the hard date. If next week we don't have a, an arena, we're moving on. You're going to be in Salt Lake City. And, and if- now we're in mid-March, and we're like, okay, we can wait 10 weeks for this, uh, for the next bid of this auction. Yeah. So something's changed here. Yeah. Steve's eating M&M's. Come on. Come on back. Yeah, no, you can, you can come next back. Next question. Yeah. Are we done talking about stupid bullshit? Sure. Yeah. Um, I, think it's, I think it's something to watch. Uh, this is from Trusted Hockey Man Ethan. Not a question, but talking about U.S. geography and where Colorado and Nashville are reminded me of this fun fact. The furthest western points in both Virginia and North Carolina, both of which are states that border the Atlantic Ocean, are further west than Detroit, Michigan. That was more interesting than the Coyotes thing. <laughs> that is interesting. <laughs> Thank you for that. Fun fact. Yeah. Thank Last you for that. thing from Squirtle. Is anyone going to talk about the fact that Boston has 15 loser points? Uh, I mean, didn't, didn't, uh, who had, who had the most last year? Was it Calgary or, Bo- uh, was or it? Florida? Huh? I, th- I thought it was Florida. Maybe it was Florida. Calgary lost 17 games in overtime or something like that. OT though. merchants. And then, yeah, Florida last year, like barely squeaked in and lost a bunch of games in overtime. I don't know. It's the point system. Yeah. Overtime's yeah. like a point flip. And, like, I think it's stupid. Yeah. I, I honestly do think it's stupid that you get a point for losing. All it, um, all it means I, is, I feel like the team with the most overtime losses that makes the playoffs is the biggest 
wild card. The only way... Because you're unsure. Yeah. 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 They're all ties, right? Mm-hmm. The, only, the NHL clearly doesn't see a problem here, but the only way to make sure that teams get on each other in overtime is, say, if we end overtime with a tie, uh, none, nobody gets a point. Or so no shootout. Don't end overtime. I don't care you about play the Play until you die. I would like the NHL to keep what they have in terms of three on three and the shootout and all that, but just go to wins and losses. Yeah, I'm with it. It's simple. If you lose, you don't get anything. If you win, you get the full thing. Just mm-hmm. rank the standings by wins and losses. Yep. I think that's an easy solution. This The follow-up in that, uh, they had a two-parter question. First that part, and next they had, in relation to Adam's rants about the linesman, and I totally agree on all those takes. Oh, thank you. How would you feel about implementing a face-off similar to floorball? So you're very Whoa. familiar with floorball, Steve, Whoa. where I'm the awake. puck the puck is placed on the ice, sticks placed to the sides of the dot, and whenever the whistle goes, you go. Uh, there'd be so many shenanigans with that. Uh, it's an it's a good idea, but I is. I think of a guy like Patrice Bergeron who would and he was the king of this, and I mean this respectfully, shenaniganery all the time with a face off. Like there's a oh, reason he won so many face offs because he are just the art of cheating. A hundred percent, and anybody who's good at them is really good at cheating. And yeah. and that's okay. Like, that's okay. I'm not mad about that. Okay. Um, I think the only way you could possibly do it to make it fair is if the puck like like came out of the stage like sigh from like doing Gangnam Style. You know that video that always goes viral, <laughs> where he goes pops up in the air and then falls down. Like that's the only way um, that or, or you know what I'm saying. Like there's just like it, it's not there and then poof, here it comes through the ice. I don't think there's a fair way to do it. Like bubble um, hockey. I, I, that's, that's hilarious. And and you try. I I you know. God bless the linesmen. They're they're trying their best. Um, oh, <laughs> they, they, they are what? trying their what best. What is that? Uh, doesn't mean the ref couldn't do it. Doesn't mean the ref couldn't do it. No, but they can't. But they can't. So the linesmen are doing their best to to make a fair face off. Though, if I see like three or four fakes, like fake drops, I'm gonna lose my fucking mind in the playoffs. They need to be scouting the refs. Here's an idea for you. Every night, track the f- the amount of fake puck drops, just and then put them together in a supercut like Vine comps used to be on World Star Hip Hop, and and just just give me a highlight reel of fake linesman puck drops. It's so annoying. I want it. What's funny though is they. I want to watch and rage. Remember they were like hard asses about no, your feet can't be off the line. They abandoned that. That's done. Watch every game. Someone's breaking that rule. Of course. Of course, oh, well. it's un, it's unenforceable. Anyway, yeah, because you're just gonna be kicking guys out every draw. It's yeah. Stupid. yeah. Yep. Oh, uh, all done. Let's, let's talk about bidding on land. Why don't you fire the extra there, Jesse? It's Friday. SDP VIP. Oh, it's out. And we go deep, and Kate Middleton, and royal families, and how the and what the Habsburg jaw is. Get ready. And I promise you. It's more interesting than buying land. <laughs> Steve. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete. Wow.